I've been reminded that I had forgotten to turn my mic on again. And if we could, you have some mics set up there, which is great. And I left a message for IT to drop up and see why it is that even though previously I could just turn on the projector here and have it work, I found that that didn't work yesterday either. And so we must be missing a step or a settings changed. So we'll see if we can put anything up on the screen that way. You know from the list of topics, what's on this week's agenda, and obviously we only met a week ago, but the two main focus of today are review the full working draft and also the new item of the town council goals that were presented at our last town council meeting on April 22nd. What I will say about the goals right now is that we are not planning to spend any time on that today unless someone feels particularly compelled by something they saw on it that they want people to be starting to think about. But because our goal is to report to the town council this coming Monday, May 6th, um, on a draft rules document that it's taking primary precedence over doing the larger goals for the council for the year. So as I mentioned in an email a couple of times, housekeeping wise, there is a copy of that rules document in the meeting folder for today, it should be, and it has been highlighted to show so the, actually the different committees I happen to be a part of, but it shows where rules is highlighted in there, so you can take a look at that. I would plan that we would talk about that next week, but again, next week will be um, the day after our town council meeting, so we will obviously have some feedback that we'll be working with then. And I appreciate that the president has mentioned that she can be a little flexible on our goals feedback, but understanding where we are um, in terms of our process now, it's just as interesting as it is, it's not rising to the top of things we have to do right now. So did anybody have any questions about the goals document? Because now would be a good time to ask since the president's here with us. Has anybody even had a chance to look at it since she no, emailed I think it? We should move oh. to the okay. document that she then that's what we'll do. So in regards to what else we're going to be doing, the draft document. Kathy had previously put up a revised version based on feedback from last meeting. I added edits to a version. That version is also available on SharePoint. Some of the edits that I made, I tried to mark clearly as being substantive versus, ooh, I took out a, a paren or a period or reordered a sentence. Some of them are substantive that we've probably never talked about. Some of them are things that you've talked about and made a different decision that I wasn't aware of because I wasn't around, perhaps. We also have some new information from the town clerk as to what she would like to also see us consider putting into the town clerk section. So I will get to, when we talk about that, I think I'll put a pin in that for later so that we can focus on the things that we have already talked about because we just started talking about the town clerk section last week. You will also notice if you looked at the draft version of the document that, of the working rules document that I made, I added an extensive set of appendices at the end. One of those is a place to maintain the policies that are currently something that interact with the council because there is no such thing in this town as a policy book and never has been to the best of my knowledge. So we have to keep it somewhere. So an appendix to our rules seemed like an appropriate place to do that. There's also a draft report that I worked on over the weekend, and Kathy has indicated that she also has made some edits to that. So we will get started. I think the first thing we should do is we should, I want to glance at the report because I want to get a sense of what those changes were so that as we're going through the rules document, we make sure we think of some of those highlights so that we can pop those into the report since the report is something we'll be wanting to submit later this week. So Kathy, you want to talk about what the edits were that you made to the report since I'm obviously familiar with what it said before, but not what the report says now. So we should be in the report, everyone should be in the report folder. The, 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 yeah, the, it, the one with CS at the end of it, and we need to look at it in markup. But I'll explain. You all need to speak more into the mic. Okay. And are uh, these on all the time now? 
If it has a light on, yes. They are. It's just that we've been viewing tapes and voices are not okay, coming I, across. I'll provide a um, overview of what I did. Um, and I had actually signaled what I thought it this needed in an email to everyone. So I uh, framed, I added words, um, framing that we, uh, uh, in the guide to the draft rules, I added a section that noted that we would looked at some 30 other city and town council rules of procedure, and Shalini will have a better count than I did. I just went and counted all the ones that were in my own folder, and it was 30. Um, and then we were looking through things that we so were variations as well as concepts that they had in common at, when drafting our own rules. And then in the reader's guide, my suggestion of a way of flagging what we think of as innovative, creative, or different would be to yellow highlight it. Um, so when we look at the main report, the yellow, something yellow highlighted would mean pay attention to this. Um, not that it's controversial necessarily, but that it's interesting and that there were a few areas where we didn't reach full agreement on what the rule should be, and I came up with blue highlighting, and I played with whether it should be green and red, and I decided yellow and blue had no, uh, no uh, qualitative <laughs> quality. So I did, so yellow would be things like, for an example, our dialogue sessions, um, our, our, our work groups, you know, there are a few, you know, a few other that giving committees the permission to be creative, you know, wh wh whatever we think need to be highlighted. And so that I, so I added substance to that. And then on how to read the draft rules, um, I went right away to saying read the whole document. And if you want to go back and look at the short document we've been working on, and then pay particular attention to the yellow and the blue. And we could add more words there, but the notion is that a lot of the other content is what you would find in any rules of procedure. You know, it's more either standard or required or required by our charter. <laughs> um, so that's, that would be sort of the reader's guide. Then I flagged, um, we had discussed this at the earlier last meeting and the meeting before, Places and I think Mandy has suggestions about how wording this better, but um, flag that we have inserted two places where we've got options, and we talked about giving an explanation of what the options were and the rationale why that why we had two options, and also showing our votes on these options. So this document shows that we were split voted and uh, showed how we voted. You know that three votes, two votes, and who voted for which. So this tracks that. Then I, at the end, I just added some summary comments, um, which were more just adding. I thought it was important to alert people that we've, in our rules, given permission to think of this as a living document, that if we want to come back as a majority of the council and change some part of it, um, either amend, add, or extract, um, we might flag that when we talk about this on Monday night for the council, because some council's documents require a supermajority vote and only allow them to visit it once a year. You know, but we haven't put a restriction on a changing. Others don't are either silent on this or not. So I just noted that this is not the first chance ever to write our rules, but that we'll be living. So I just put the word living document. But the key changes are more background on the work we did to come up with this set of rules, what guided our decisions, um, flagging the two kinds of highlights. One is interesting, unusual, or Amherst only kinds of pieces, and then where we're asking people to pay attention and actually vote on it because we're giving them options. So those were the main changes. And now, Alyssa, when we go through the main document, I don't agree um, so when we talk about appendices, um, for example, I don't think the charter should be an appendix to this. So in this report, um, I didn't, I may have changed some of the things we said appendices. I think, so when we get to the main report, I'd like to talk about how to keep this re our rules as short as possible and, and we can, for charter, 
we can make a hot link just to go right over to the charter document in the online version of rules so there's no need to repeat wording um, unnecessarily. You know, I'm a little concerned when we look at our rules that he thought we wanted to be short and succinct. We looked at a couple towns that had done it that way, but we're at 22 pages about before we get to our appendices. So I don't want people to think they're about to read a, a, a Bible or a dictionary or an encyclopedia. So, so those were the main changes, but I think coming back to this um, to make sure we've captured in a short, and I've, this is still just four pages long as a report, so it's a nice short report, um, but figure out anything that's missing. That's my summary. Thank you for the filling in that middle section, Kathy. I appreciate it because I didn't think we'd be able to do that until after this meeting. So it's really helpful to have that to start with today in addition to the beginning and end points. I think one of the things that's made my service on this committee exceedingly difficult in comparison to some of the other committees is that there are so many more philosophical differences as to how to approach things here. And we can talk about the appendix for the charter later, but um, in referencing talking about the charter too frequently in the rules, that's exactly a problem I have, is that I was really hoping we would talk a lot less about actual wording from the charter in the rules because we will need to be able to refer people to the charter and have them work together. If we're simply going to repeat what the charter says, that doesn't seem like a particularly useful document to me. So I appreciate additional people looking at that as a focus because I don't like just repeating what the charter says. That would have been a much simpler task. Um, we have come up with much more creative ways of approaching things in several other can, sections. Can we just get on to the document? Um, well, given that you got to give a really long explanation of your philosophical beliefs about this, Kathy, I thought it was okay for me to mention mine as well. So moving on to the document, would you like to lead that? Uh, yeah, I, I think we're gonna have to go through it line by line. Um, I would think that would be the point of reviewing a, an entire draft document. This is the first time we've seen it all together. Um, I have some changes to the report that Kathy drafted. Are we still on the report? Or um, if there's something that immediately jumps out at you, I think it would be a good idea to go ahead and I, capture I, it now. I wasn't sure if we were I moving on. I think that's on. great. I, wasn't sure. we, I didn't think we were done with the report. Uh, yeah, so. I think <laughs> if, if you want to grab it now, we can make a note, and then that way we yeah. can come back to it at the end of today's session. Kathy, given that you did the most recent section of edits on this, how would you like to accomplish that in terms of technically getting those into this document? Uh, I have two very minor okay. things and then a request for an additional section. Okay, go. Um, so the, do you want to capture that, Kathy? Do you want to do yeah. that or do you want me so to do that? In your yes, section on committee draft rules options, the rule 10.1 option, I, I just ask that we include what each of those two options do. Um, it seemed to be missing the second half of the options. So it, it read whether policies or processes recommended by a committee must come to the full council for a vote before being formally adopted. And then I would add the clause or whether the council should clarify in each committee's charge which policies need council approval. Okay. Can, can, uh, okay. Yeah. can um, I if, can, if I can show you that language after the meeting. That'd be perfect. Um, yep. And there was a spelling, the next one down, I would put the word as in front of ex officio, I think, to make it a full sentence, and that might just get lost as we get this report to final. Um, I would like to... Uh, no, so, so the committee draft rules in the report had a bullet point on rule 10.1 but only discussed one of the two options and had a bullet point on 10.10, .10, which is the ex officio or not. Since 10.10, .10, the ex officio one is essentially, you're either ex officio or not. I, the wording that Kathy has proposed seems, because it has whether or not counselors may participate. So it's got the or not in there that covers both yeah. options. So, so she's, that first one, Darcy, 10.1, .1, I don't have the alternative. Yeah. And whereas in 10.10, .10, I have whether or not, you know, so that has the you, you either can or you can't. It's, yeah. Those are the two. Yeah. And then I. No, 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 no. Yeah. Um, in the report, I just want in that bullet point both options indicated as which the options are. I'm not eliminating <laughs> the options. Oh, no, I think up there. Up there. 
Up higher. Up higher. <laughs> no, sorry, it was hard to decide where I was. Yeah. Which way to do it? Because it doesn't say whether. Yeah. No, I'm not op eliminating the options, Darcy. <laughs> and then I would like to see. We had talked about as a committee in the report and whether it's this report or a subsequent report out of this committee, because I can foresee us having a second report at some point, um, including a section on items we had talked about. Um, I'm trying to find my draft of this report. Um, that we have as recommendation, that we as a rules committee didn't get to, but we think some committee, potentially GOL, because I think we just said most of it would fall to GOL, but whether it's a different committee or not, we recommend or we think would be useful documents. We talked about an external document for how the public can participate that's not embedded in the rules. We talked about creating recommendations as a council for posting public comments on the website, and that needs looked at somewhere. Um, oh, we talked about potentially having a council policy for approval of minutes standardized do we want to? We didn't get to that particular item in the rules, so that might be one to forward on somewhere. So some section that includes. I think that's stuff so. Like that. So it would rep and can you draft that then, and we or just and then we can just plop it in the middle of this. Sure. Do, I guess the question I, is, do we want it in this no. report or a future report? I we could we could flag in this report that there will be such a thing, and then I think we should offer it at a later meeting because we really want people to focus on this, not on the things that we haven't had time to dis to discuss in more detail yet. And so we really want them to focus on this. But when we are finished with you know, our final or intermediate step, to be able to say, and these are the things that aren't in here that we think that someday ought to be addressed. Okay, so it may great. be that it could be in the super short form additional issues will follow up in, in the next report or something. It, it can say right here that there are additional issues okay. and they will be addressed in a separate report later and then that way people can just pull that out later okay. when they're comparing it to a further revised version of and, the rules and this at a would future get meeting. Dropped, and this would get dropped into summary comments? No, this is a separate report. That, well, there's a sentence or two that I'm writing under next steps that says that there will be such a report. And, and then a report maybe when we present the final rules. Okay. In I'll be editing it one more time after today before it goes to But council, a second but report to council meetings or something from now that's like the final rules committee report maybe could have that. I just don't want to lose track of yes. we were going to do that. So, Alyssa, are you editing this right now, or should I be editing it? You should be editing based on the things that you added today and the items that we come across that are still issues of disagreement that you wanted to highlight in the document. You can make a note, and I've also made a note oh, of I'm, the I'm fact that I'll be editing it one more time before it's submitted to the town council. Are we, we still focused on the report. The report itself yeah. will be okay. edited by so me one Mandy, more time, but I'm expecting you to drop some data in about the disagreement. We don't have to wordsmith this sentence. I have a note, Mandy, report of items. We can move on now, and we can talk. We, that report will be a future report. So were there any other items in the report that you wanted to talk about? No. Language at this point. Okay, cool. So now, Kathy, if you'd like to lead us through the actual draft, drum roll, please, that would be terrific. Okay, um, I guess we just should go through each of the track edits and um, if I keep master control here, um, if we like the edit, I can do right now and accept the edit and then we can talk about any, does, is, does that seem like a reasonable way? Um, it's not up on SharePoint because I can't view it on SharePoint so we'll have to each be just, so I, I'm gonna. We can be looking at, but you will edit. So we, we won't see live changes because you want right. to make sure that you can capture the live changes yeah. effectively. So but I'm, we can look at what I'm doing right now is uh, full full draft. Is it in the header? So I want to make sure we're all working from the same document. So remind us, Kathy, which one you're pulling up? Because I see a couple other versions here. I don't have a deleted. So oh, maybe, maybe you had added a date that then 
when Alyssa did her changes, the date got deleted, and so. Yeah, so I think I think so. We are in the version that I worked on most recently. Is that correct? Yep. Okay. Because so I'm, I'm going to. I've already saved it under a new name. And so you're going to do my, live mine. edits right now, but we won't see them, and right. that's okay because we have this as a reference document as we go along. Because I'm not doing it in SharePoint. Oh, okay. All right. I just so we're just going to check. We're just going to say yeah, thank you, don't, Kathy, don't for worry, doing I, that. You know. Okay. So to be started. So the table of contents. I thought it's going to be okay to send this to the council without the table of contents right now, in case yep. any of the subheadings. But just make it clear there will be one. Okay. Just, you can do like headers and highlight each right. one as a header so that the table of contents is really easy to produce um, without having to separately type them. You can change it from like body text to header text. Okay, as far as. I can help you with that. And so as far as I'm concerned, you know, as I'm looking at it, the first, uh, the, the, the initial is just a, as stated as, I think that's fine. Um, so Where I'm just we? literally going down. I just, I didn't download it. I just opened it in Word. Darcy's is showing up with it. See, mine shows up as a strikeout, and yours is not showing up. Um, so yours is showing up. Oh, as go to review. Go review and. Now, now you'll see when it's easier to read it that way because you can see how this, what the original sentence was without having to read. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> so is everyone looking at something that looks roughly like this then? Yeah, it's, it's just if you don't, if you don't see it with the strikeouts, you can't see how the original sentence read. So I'm Correct. Sure. Mine shows the strikeouts, so I'm assuming okay. everyone so feels comfortable with where we're at. Preamble's fine and purpose didn't have any changes, so it's fine. Authority, I simply re reoriented the sentence. That was not a big okay, thing. Okay, so just one thing, Alyssa. The reason this was written the way it was because we hadn't yet done definitions. Okay. So uh, this is the only section when I read through it, the preamble, that didn't just do the simple charter. And we enabled ourselves to do charter because down below it says whenever we say charter, we mean the Amherst Home Rule Charter. So that is the reason it was originally written the other way. Yeah, the reason I changed it is because the charter itself says we can refer to it as the Home Rule Charter, and I thought we were all using the Convention Charter. But if it would please you to put it the other way, I'm totally fine with that. I understand your logic. That's fine. I mean, I don't feel strongly so about it, but it I, know, I know that was the main reason we left it as is. So, my my thinking is, if if we go to what Alyssa changed it to, we add a home rule in front of the word charter because that's exactly how the charter says it would be the yeah. home rule charter, not the Amherst. But we don't right. shorten it to even charter. The, these rules are what shortens it even farther. Okay. Yeah, so that's true. We shorten it more. So, so, what so would, we can what just would undo you? the change, and that would solve yeah. the whole problem. Okay. I think just reject that. Just reject that change, that change that and don't section. worry about it. Reject it. Reject. That would be fine. Okay. And then I added in an item. And so I'm going to pipe up when it's something that I added. So the reason that I added that is, as the note says on the side, we didn't address anywhere in here. Remember how I did an, a document that checked all the word rules in all of our, in the charter? I wanted to mention here that we are not doing that now. That doesn't mean we wouldn't do it in the future. That could be added to the list of someday things. But I thought it was important to address every instance of the word rules that was in the charter. Opinions? I would say we can maybe look at that at a different next meeting. 
And I think that's what you just said, right? Alyssa? No, what I'm saying is, no, that's not what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm saying that the charter says we can establish rules for other committees. Remaining silent on that seems less optimal than saying this set of rules is not establishing that. Then we can, if people want to, they can add to that someday list. Someday we should influence rules of other committees. But I didn't want to just leave it out there that we didn't make we didn't make a proactive decision. We made a proactive decision not to submit rules to the council that have anything to do with determining other bodies' rules and orders of business, which the charter enables us to do. So rather than remaining silent and saying somebody should find that in the charter someday that we could do that, or somebody asking us from another committee, we could just simply say it up front, we're not doing that, but they can do it. So I, my initial, so we are talking about the new one for then. Yeah. Yep. Um, my initial thoughts when I read it was it wasn't necessary because the title of the document is Town Council Rules of Procedure, um, not Multiple Member Body Rules of Procedure. So to me, that was obvious enough. If people don't think that's obvious enough that it's not going to apply to multiple member bodies, then I'm okay with leaving this in. I would just ask for an additional clause in that section beyond what Alyssa drafted if we are going to leave it in. I don't necessarily think that it's necessary though. I, I don't think it's necessary and I find anything that says we're not including something to be extra words that we don't need to have. You know, so read this because we're not gonna say, tell you anything about it. So to me, it, it takes away from the flow where it said, this is our rules, this is what we're doing how we're gonna act in definitions, it's right in the middle, and I would just take it out to make it, I, brevity, throughout this, I'm gonna argue for be brief and succinct where we can, um, while, because it's not adding anything. I'm going to argue every single time that this is supposed to be a useful document that people can refer to regularly, and sometimes shorter is the enemy of doing that. Okay, but Alyssa, earlier you said don't add sentences to the charter, just assume people have read the charter, so this is, to me, a sentence from the charter that is not particularly helpful in our own preamble. And the way I, reason I disagree is because this is the first charter okay. we've had that says that one body can control another body's rules. We never had that in the old town government act. That was not a thing. The select board I, and the town can, manager can we just did not control another body. Talk about what this says. It says each member body that does not include councilors shall determine its own rules. It doesn't say the council has any control over those rules. It says each member That's body. That's the okay. Maybe we have a misunderstanding of what the charter section refers to there. The charter says. Unlike any charter we've worked under before in this town, I'm not talking about Greenfield or Northampton, I'm talking about here, says that the town council has the ability to control other committees by creating rules for them. We are choosing not to do that. The reason we are choosing, we're saying that these apply to anything that have counselors on them. These don't apply to the Conservation Commission. We're making that super clear, so if the Conservation Commission wants to do something someday, they still have that option, and we're not controlling it. A future town council, six months from now, may want to try and control it, just as we've had that discussion about charges of other committees. All I'm, all I'm saying is that particular sentence says we don't have any control over those bodies, so I don't think it's conveying if you think we have control over other bodies, it doesn't say we that. We don't so have control if we don't take it. Rule section 9.12b that Alyssa cites from the charter is that each multiple member body shall determine its own rules and order of business unless another provision is made by the town council or general laws. Okay, so that's the, so, the so I'm that, missing that, yeah, I'm missing that's, that clause. That clause is in there, so that's Alyssa is correct that we could way. make a provision my point is that these rules are clear enough in their title that they're not applying to multiple member bodies. Okay, so I'm, I'm just missing those words because otherwise it doesn't read that we have any control over them. You're supposed to know that because the charter is not supposed to be repeated inside the rules document. This, this does repeat the sentence from the charter. No, it doesn't. That is not the same sentence in the charter.
multiple member bodies can include counselors, and this language would exempt the, for example, the ECAC or JCPC or BCG um, committees from, the, and maybe include them in these rule scopes. It's to me, it, it's worded not accurately either, um, because this wording is member body that does not include any counselors right. shall determine its own rules. Even if that multiple member body includes counselors, they can determine their own rules. The town council is not a multiple member body, so the town council's right. rules are separate. Um, we're not, so even these rules don't apply to ECAC, despite what this scope document as drafted might ah, imply. You're indicating that that might, okay, I you're, hear what you're, you're saying. The, so, even the draft itself is not quite accurate and is potentially implying because of something those mixed that's not committees. accurate. Okay, I can see that. I mean, I was trying to avoid that by adding the counselors in there, which is why it's not verbatim from the charter but I now see what you're saying in regards to that. And so I think it would be, this would be an appropriate place to put in the, we are not, con we, I can quote the, for example, in that list that you have that we, in your mind, Mandy Jo, of future items, I can say, we didn't address this section of the charter. It's just another for future reference thing. That will not be in this report, that will be on that list of future items as we are not attempting to apply these to anyone else and that's a future option of the council. So, so is what you're trying to say is that these rules apply only to the town council? What I'm trying to say, that seems obvious from the title, what I'm trying to say is that the charter itself gives us the option to make rules. Just like the charter itself gives us an option to make rules around the provision around the finance committee. It doesn't say what those rules look like. Okay, I just, I'm, we're, we're never going to get I'm saying the, add to future thing. We can be done arguing are, about this now. So are we, but are we taking 1.4 out? Yes. Okay. Absolutely. That's, I didn't understand that. That is fine. That can be a way of down the road discussion. As I said, I just wanted to capture every instance of rules that was captured in the charter. The only reason that one point set what now says, well, it should be changed back numbering to amendment it, and it, repeal. It, it actually changes back automatically. So yeah. It'll so all be I'm saying I can't give you the number reference because I'm not working from the same version you're looking at. But amendment and repeal was simply that just wasn't the phrasing we used elsewhere in the charter. So I was trying to be more in the rules. I was trying to be more consistent. We don't normally say to vote in favor other places. I'm fine with the change. I'm fine with the change. Just trying to have it scan. And I was just looking at retitling rule two to have less words in it. Right. So I see that we have 24 pages to cover here and we just took 45 minutes to do uh, one page. And a report. And a report. Oh, the report <laughs> too, pardon me. <laughs> so, you know, we, how, far, how long are we here today? We, we said that at the beginning of the meeting. We're here till one, except for people who have to peel off because they have things to do. Okay. We have to turn something in. We can obviously take something that like just happened and say, if okay. anything's going to have Let's any controversy, it gets put aside. I'm ready to. So are we on rule I'm two? Okay. I'm okay with the name change. We're on rule two. We're on rule two. name changed. I added the material into into election of officers because one, we need to be clear that the clerk of the council is to preside over the election. That is not in the charter, this is a rule. The other things are rules about nominating oneself and being able to speak to your qualifications. We have gotten feedback that it looks like we've done everything outside of the room when nobody comes in and talks about what they're doing. So we didn't okay. do that. So. Okay, so are these um, each just formatting, are these going to be just bullet, 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 bullet? Uh, how should I? I guess I was figuring it would depend on how the rest of it looked. And so okay. rather than trying to add numbers and letters that no, would no, just cause I didn't, problems I'm later. I'm just asking, I, I think this yeah, is fine. So the, there was nothing, there was just new, some new wording mm -hmm. added here. Just some things. Yeah, I'm okay with them. And I just changed the wording on, change its officers and discretion back yep. to the way a charter says. And I just broke out the president into 
because, again, philosophical difference, uh, not having a block of text, but a list. I don't care if it's bullet points, letters, I, bleh, I don't care at all. I just wanted to be able to refer to it more easily. I also thought it was important to add the part about the press. That's new. Yep, I think so. Where is that? 2-2-G. She's, this is what it ends up looking like. You've got to go up a little bit. Did you guys so look at the share plan in text? No, you're not. I'm not in share plan. I, it happens. I just, mine's open in Word, and it looks like this. Why is it? Everybody else's look like that. Mine and Shalini's look roughly the same. But not identical. <laughs> Can we talk about, I did not... I don't like the moving the vice president clause up above what the president's duties are. It makes, it's yeah. weird to me to show the vice president's duties before the president's duties. I, I so agree. I would personally keep I understand. it low. I understand, I wanted people to think about it simply because we don't, we don't outline any other vice presidential duties. And so that's fine. If you wanna have it at the end, that's fine. So undo that. But I would appreciate if we could keep the reference to the rules that I added um, within the president's section assuming those are still gonna be the numbers of the rules at the end. I didn't like the new G, I must say. Um, no. So there's no, so we don't have a rule about who talks to the I press? think it would be the president's job to potentially either speak but I don't think the president can say, I don't think we as counselors give up because we're not president right. the ability to I, speak to people, but beyond that, the president might not be the appropriate spokesperson and could delegate that to someone, and this language as written doesn't even allow for the delegation to say the chair of finance for a financial of thing. Of course it allows for delegation. Saying something, someone serves as spokesperson does not mean that they can't delegate. And by not putting it in here at all, then again, you're not having a role. You're just having a repeat of the charter document. If all you're gonna do is repeat the same elements Alyssa, that are in the charter, Alyssa, why, do can it. You, can you just change your tone a little bit because I'm just so frustrated that, that no, every no, but single no, thing let me is just, pushed back. Let me just point out something. This section has been drafted for two months and has been presented to us every time. So if you're talking about a frustration level, there's probably other around the table to get this now. So let's just talk about it as a slightly lower tone because you have had lots of opportunity to come back with this. This was one we all sat down with and the document, other than the other two sections, has been presented every time. So we're just trying to get all the way through the document and not argue every word. If everyone doesn't agree, we'll have to figure out what to do with a section that's new. We're just gonna have to figure out a process that gets us through. So let's be clear that we did not wordsmith every single section at every single meeting. And yes, some of us missed some meetings. There is no question no, and I, I missed I'm more just than saying, others. Just, just lower the volume a little bit so we can figure out if everyone likes G or not. Fine. Because it's new. Fine, and we could also come back to it if you'd like to move on to another section and mark it to come back to it. Is this 3.0? Yeah. So it's not the document, that does it have my initials in the title of the document? No, but she's in 3.2, not 2.2. Two. Oh, Uh, no, I downloaded to my PC. And so that she could accept the changes immediately as we do them. That could work. Because I'm saving it. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm right. changing something to go through, but, but mine is showing that. Sharing documents is always good. No, I'm accepting changes so everything yeah. Yeah. is. I'm doing reverse arrangement. So it's, if people want to vote, 
on that particular clause, that's fine with me. Otherwise, since obviously you've only had the time to sit with it as in this morning, because you know we don't express opinions to a quorum outside of a posted meeting, is that if you, we could either one, drop it, we could two, leave it in as a point of, we don't know what we wanna do with this or not. Three, we could put it into a future document. I mean, we okay. have choices here, but we don't have to argue yeah. about it for five okay, minutes so, now. So I would vote to drop it if we're staying on G. I would just be silent on it. Okay, so then I disagree. And so at what point do we, does it make it into the document of we don't know what to do? So this goes in not the report where we had votes on disagreement, but this goes in the future doc, the future, future explorations. What do you want to call it, Mandy Joe? Future explorations, uh, eventual GOL work. <laughs> I'm putting add to Mandy Joe document. That's what my okay. notes say. And and that would be because we have to figure out who and how we figure out spokespeople, so it would be a longer. Can I ask why you edited um, the president shall pre prepare agendas, but we had prepare agendas with the advice of council members and the town manager. Is there a reason you took the, that word out? Yes, because it says go to rule 10, which talks more about preparation of agendas, so otherwise it was just they're duplicative. To avoid it was avoid repeating, yeah. so it'll, it, it appears later. Yep. Yeah. Okay. What about the added H? Um, I kind of liked the state of the town being in a separate rule because it's not just the president. H now pulls a town manager duty into duties of the president instead of separating it out further. It, it, I know the language was copied directly. It's just where in the yeah, rules I don't, it goes. I don't like having it stand alone because I think it's, it simply belongs in the president's duties and the president should be able to see all their duties in one paragraph, okay. not have to also read so the state we, of the town address. We, why don't we come back to where it was before because I don't remember where it was before. It, it was just in 2.3. It's right oh, there it, lined it, it, out. Oh, it was, it was, it was it's its just own. moved up. So you didn't like it as a freestanding? Correct. You wanted under, under just the president? I wanted to be clear that all the president's duties were in one section not, this entire section is not called president's duties, it's called organization. I and so I to me it was a presidential duty and it belonged in the presidential duty section. And it's also a duty of the president and vice Does president. Does anyone president feel strongly person. about this in terms of where it used to be? Okay, <laughs> okay, so we're moving. We're moving, we're, we're gonna just leave it where it is, so I'm doing the accepts for these. So we're gonna have to come back to the town council. Leaving it in H? I'm leaving it in H unless okay. I hear differently. Okay. No, I just heard yep. So there's a new section, clerk of the council, that's been added in here. Kathy gave me the, the, the section to add to, and I've added to it, and I've also now heard back from Margaret, and she has even more that she'd like to add into this. So what I'd like to do is put a pin in this and come back to this later in today's conversation. Okay. Do you, do, so it's, you have it's language. It's all new. So. You have language from Margaret. Yes, I have additional language from Margaret that's even longer. I had some additional language that and should so be added to. Let, let's come back to that because we'll see what we can come up with later in the meeting. But I think we need to move ahead, and we will come back to that later today. It's not next week. I mean later today. Okay. Because that's not something you guys have been talking about all this time. It only came okay. up last time. So are we down to rule three council meetings? I just thought the wording of, of, of suddenly saying that chairing was a thing as opposed to just being presiding officer was just a little, didn't really match the rest of what our meeting staff said, but I'm not gonna die over it. I just thought it was, a, it just seemed clunky to me. I will go there with yep. it. Yeah. And then the section that you might remember me talking about, minutes of council meetings, which I believe is still 3.5. Can, can, yeah. I had one in 3.2 that I wanted to talk about. Okay, good. Um, I didn't change the anything. The president there. and I forwarded this request to both our chair and vice chair wants to have highlighted for discussion at the council level uh, 3.2E. 
the 10 p.m. Ah, deadline. Right. So if we can just highlight that for so this is my this, this is a yellow yellow is it yellow I think this is a because yellow because it's new and exciting yellow is new and exciting no, and blue yellow is controversial is things to discuss and highlight as different or new or things right. to discuss but not with options not with options blue is options wait I didn't think they were to be discussed I didn't think that's what the report said I thought the report said we're highlight we're drawing them to your attention because like these are the exciting pieces then there was maybe no it's a blue highlight for discussion purposes. okay so, so we can go back to the report and we can say new and interesting or people may, might want to discuss it so we'll just add that we're you know that we've put this in but we want to, we want you to think about it okay, so, so why are we not making just the recommendation and saying it's new and exciting because we all agreed that this was a recommendation we're not saying that the entire town council has to agree with us but that's true for every other no page we're just going to flag it because if you don't flag it with yellow like this people won't see that we just and we actually those are who may or may not remember way back in December we had this discussion and we just never wrote it into our own operating rules and we certainly have not um, been operating this way but so I think it's yellow is just a notion of when you're reading through this a lot of this will just be this is the way we've been doing it or something but this is something that you should this and I would totally change how our meetings are run yeah, right but now. I also don't think it has anything to do with a, like a, a blue highlight which is a split opinion no no we, it's not blue Yellow is just look yellow. At it. Yellow means pay attention to it. Yes, Blue it doesn't means mean discuss. we're asking you to make a decision. Those were right. the two ways exactly. I set it up. That's how I understood it too, and I just thought that Mandy Joe was going a different direction with it. I don't think yellow is no, to be discussed. No, she, it just no, she, she highlighted, just, literally highlighted. She was just asking that it be yellow highlighted so people see it's there. Yep. Right? Yep. Yep. Good. That makes total sense. Draw people's attention to the highlights. Yes. There's some obviously editing to be done for formatting here, and we can talk about that later. But and then minutes, are we up to 3.5 minutes, or were there other changes other than formatting? So you've got the yellow highlight, Kathy. So if I move on to minutes of council meetings, the, what I was trying to describe in a couple of previous meetings did not quite make it in, and that's how I try, ended up trying to describe it this time. Some of the things that are listed in A are requirements of mass general law, some of them are requirements of the charter, and some of them are requirements of these rules. So rather than citing each individual one, I we think just said fine. that. I, I just, when, Kathy, when you go through for formatting, I'm concerned with the deletions and lack of parentheses that that sentence will be unreadable and okay. unclear. So if we can find a way to cite everything with it being readable would be nice. Okay. Are we are we putting that burden on Kathy as well? Yep. I, I'm okay. going it, to... It goes to the formatting of stylistic. Yeah. yeah. I mean, in addition to all the A's, B's, 1's, and 2's. when you get rid of the parentheses, you've got mass general right. laws, MGLs, as well as with the charter, char you... <laughs> it's, it's, it becomes a it's lot. Really, it's really easy for me to do yeah. it if I know that I'm doing that. Right. And, and I'll just, I'll, I'll remember. Yeah. Good. Yeah, I only caught a couple of those when I was already in a sentence for another reason. Now we have two different ways of doing A's and B's, so we can just make a decision at the end how we do them. Exactly. And I know exactly where they are. So we're 3.7? Yeah. 3.7, I've I know I've been harping on this, but I've been trying to make clear that an emergency is not what you or I might call an emergency. It's a very specific concept in law. So is this an exact quote from CMR? Yes. So I guess my concern with, I, I get why you would want to add it. Um, you've taken some other things that are exact quotes from CMRs or OMLs out, so there's a consistency of what we put in, what we put out that I'm not sure I get. Um, but my concern is if we're quoting it instead of just saying 940 C or an emergency as defined in 940 CMR or whatever, I, I know why you want to quote it. But my concern is when 940 CMR changes, if we have it defined in here, we have to come back and change these rules. We don't actually um, because the CMR would be controlling. Well, but there would be this disagreement and so if I'm looking at a future thing how can we avoid 
creating disagreements when things in the future change but in state husband, law. My husband would, had the same, say, uh, I, I you know, be careful in writing in the state law. Yeah, We're, better to just, so my preference would be um, an emergency which shall comply with the general laws and regulations or something instead of as defined in 940 CMR so that we don't redefine it as they define it so that we don't have to change it when they change it. So that's true for every mass general law reference we make anywhere else as well, which it, we have to be cautious about. Mm -hmm. I understand, I, under, I also am the reason, okay. The reason I put this here is because emergency has been defined poorly in the past and not in compliance. And it, what it said before here was simply referencing the charter and the charter does not elaborate on what an emergency is. The charter does not reference the CMR. If you want to just put the CMR there, and not say shall comply with because that makes me want to cry every time I see words like that. Um, it just, it can either be defined as or it can simply be, it can just end with laws and then have the CMR reference and the charter reference. That would be fine with me. We don't need to say shall comply with. That's, that's not helpful. We can say that there's an actual CMR reference which we did not have in here prior to this. We only had the charter reference. So. Is, is it the wording, instead of shall comply, call an emergency meeting which where emergencies are defined by the general law? Is that what we're trying to say? You know, I'm just trying to understand the, what was missing from the way we did it before. The, 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 what was, well, okay, so what it said before was it ended with the word laws, period, and then it had a charter reference. The charter reference is no more than exactly what it says right. here. No, I'm, so I'm instead, just I'm just adding the CMR reference. I don't need any of the words from the CMR. I don't care about that. I just want to have the added, I know that's what I put here, but now I'm fine with, because of all the conversation we've had, take out all the highlighted words and just reference the CMR as well as the charter. Okay, and is that one okay? That one would be okay if we just referenced the CMR, yeah. Yeah, so. I, I went overboard in referencing the CMR. We'll just reference the CMR itself without its definition. Okay, got it. So three. 3.8 is in Rule 5, and in fact, there were two different time periods called out in the two different versions of the wording, and so it seemed reasonable to just say, look at Rule 5. I, I'm okay with that. Yep. And, yeah, and, and we're going to highlight it yellow here and then highlight because it yellow when we get Because it's special. Exactly. Okay. okay. Yes. Exactly. What about round tables? You probably want to highlight that too. Uh, we can highlight it. I was going to get rid of the words or roundtables, both in the title and in the first sentence, because we, you know, we yeah. only say work session, so we should just okay. use work session. Yeah, I think that was a good working title, but I, th <laughs> yeah. but I think work sessions clarifies it enough. <laughs> and just so those of you who may or may not remember, it's because some town meetings town rules call them work sessions and others call them round tables. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So, so I, it was a great so working I did, title. I gave both things because yep. they always define them the same way. So I'm taking or round tables out of the first sentence as well, right? Yes. Okay. That was the only other, the first sentence was the only other time round table was used. So I figured we decided on work session. And should we capitalize work session every time it's used? It's like used four times. What, yeah. What's our convention? It wouldn't be a bad idea like because that. I, that's an awfully big block of text, yeah. and I thought about trying to bullet it out, but then I was sensitive to making the document too long. So maybe if we highlighted it each, I mean, we capitalized it each time, that would help for readability. Okay. I think I found one, two, three, four times. No, I see it. Got it. Because they are a semi-official thing, because they're defined in here. I would I get rid of the quotes over around yeah. work session the first time. Right. So what I'm thinking is the purpose of such sessions, instead of having to say each set, and then I can do purpose of such sessions, each session shall be devoted to, unless we always want to do work sessions, you know, in, in not having defined it, but I'm, I'm not strong on needing that. It's, it's the way you fix some committees later. Maybe. Yeah. I, uh, okay. Let me just see how it looks when I do it. I'll, yeah. I'll, for now, I'm capitalizing all work. Every time work session appears, it will be capitalized. And the pr 
the quotes around work session will be gone. Okay. Okay. Blowing right away down. We're in agenda. Um, just a, a question on the change of the title. To me, this agenda order only applies to regular council meetings. We don't have to use this in uh, council committees ad hoc committees and other business. So just when you changed the title, were you thinking it had a um, broader, broader, you know, you took regular council meeting out of the title? Right. So I thought it was wordy, and I also wasn't sure since we didn't have a separate section that was agendas for everything else, I was trying to understand what we were really trying to accomplish there. So if you're not s suggesting the, I would argue that any suggestion of this, no matter what you call it, is you know, trying to set a standard for other council committees, but it's not, I mean, it says agenda order for regular council meetings. It doesn't anywhere else say agenda order for anything else. That's not another alternative. There is no other kind of agenda rule. So that's what I was looking for is I was like, oh, well, if this is the agenda order for regular council meetings, then where's the agenda order for everything else? And so instead, I was like, oh, this just is about regular council, and that's why it says 4.1 talks about agenda. So I think it's just a different, my brain was looking for a comparable okay. section uh, so for I something else. I, I'm, I'm good with the change. Okay. Um, in changing that, I, with Alyssa's points, I see we could probably make two other changes, both in 4.1 and 4.2. We should probably delete the word regular in 4.1 um, so that the president shall prepare the agenda for council meetings instead of regular council meetings. Because it's all council meetings. Because it's all council meetings yeah. um, with advice from right. blah, blah, blah. And in 4.2, maybe we just want to say council meetings shall proceed in the following order unless the president or presiding officer of the meeting determines a shift in order will facilitate the process. It doesn't mean you have to have everything, but that's that, the that order. Work, that works fine. So that's fine. That makes sense. Council meetings. Yep rather than constantly calling council meetings regular council meetings. They're just meetings, unless there's something else. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we got to that awkwardness because later we define these other meetings, but I'm fine. It looks, it looks really nice and it So, Alyssa, the, 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 your color code is just to signal you changed something, right? Yeah, Because yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm taking those back out. Yeah, um, exactly. Okay. Right. You're not accepting that they stick. Because we didn't, I didn't know what your color coding no, scheme was going to be in the report fine. at this point. And we both picked that color. So, yeah, these were just to draw your attention to something that okay, I Okay, so I have a question on um, 4.3. Three, where I see that you took it out and moved it to public comments later. Um, I thought it was important that it be attached to the agenda section, and I'll talk about later because there was a subtle wording change, because it, it says that in these action areas we're going to take additional public comments. So just, uh, you moved it out, and was that because it's duplicative? Um, why did you move it from here? So I moved everything out, if you'll look at this. I took away uh, this. Right, I'm this, just asking about this one. And, well, that's why, is it, it, that's the biggest reason, is because I took everything out other than the basic list of agenda items. I moved exec executive sessions is duplicative, so we didn't need it at all. Oh, but but just, can I stay on moved. just this one question, because the agenda, 
The agenda order goes one, two, three, four, and fourth is public comments, but we actually right. have public comments opened up under action items. That's what we've been doing. So that's, it goes directly with, it's not a definition of what a public comment is. It's saying we have an additional comment, public comment period within this agenda. So that's why I thought it needed to be anchored with agenda. The reason I don't have that is because you, 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 the wording's too general. Yeah. In the actual agendas we now use, it's called general public comment. So, and under so, there we so number specify, four would be general public comment. Yeah, and under there we specify which items will have regular will have public comment later. So it's right. called general public. And comment. so I understand exactly what we were trying to get at there. I just thought the whole concept was better covered in the public comment section because it's addressed more thoroughly in the public comment section. Okay, so maybe and we'll so, look at that when we get there. Yes. I I have the same concern I think Kathy did. Um, in terms of agenda items, I I see this, and, and I, I've got some rewording, I, I major topic as I never discussed, when there is a presentation or discussion item That's or action item, it. you know, you can tag it to numbers six and seven in the agenda. Um, it is to me, when I read that sentence, it to me, falls more on how does the agenda look? Yep. Not, it, it, it also falls to when public will be able to comment, but it to me falls, is appropriate here, maybe it shows up both places, because if it's not tagged here, there's no indication that we on the agenda that, that we, we have, have the ability to, that, that the president has to be putting it there too. So if we're looking at what does the agenda have to look like, that what was 4.3 and is now number, well, and if was you, deleted, need, needs something in the agenda to cue the president in to, you have to put those and, stuff. And do you remember when we, when we first too. drafted this and sent it in, we actually said, after action item, public comment, after this public comment, and it looked awful to, to, to draft it that way, but that's what we mean, that you're opening up public comments in these. I appreciate that we're trying to say the whole reason we're doing this is to establish a, an operating rule. I also think that we're making it a bit cumbersome on this page when I feel like it could be handled elsewhere. But if it's important to you to keep it in this section and find a different way, because that phrasing doesn't work. I, I, I can and so um, if if you can find a so way to rephrase Mandy, it that can suits you just everybody, give me go for it. Uh, when a presentation and when items or let's see, it would be when presentation and discussion items or action items are appear on the agenda for the first time, president, the president shall include additional public, shall include public comment sessions on those items. The second half of the sentence could really be remain the same, but it's when presentation and discussion items or action items appear on the agenda for the first time. Um, so does that mean that if an item came up for the first time for a discussion item, it, w it would have to have public comment, but then there's no vote, the next week it comes up as an action item for the first time? Does it get public comment the second time also? Yes. I'm assuming so. Yes, we, and I think that's where we've been operating. Yes, yes, we have been operating that way. Just checking because it's not completely so I, clear. So yeah. I'm thinking just one thought would be on 4.3, I, I could say additional public comments, colon, and then when presentations, major topics, or action items appear on the agenda for the first time, the council president, you know, so just to signal what, so we're, we're opening it up, or we could leave it just the way it is. I don't care. I'm, I'm fine with this writing. I don't want to belabor this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so I have my, what I edited as is when presentations, comma, major topics, comma, sure there's a comma there, or action items appear on the agenda for the first time, 
count the council president shall include additional public comment sessions specific to the issue. We can get rid of the word council, the president. Uh, right. Yep, that makes it much clearer. Thank you. As we're going through, for some weird reason, Kathy, 4.1, 4.2, and 4.3 don't actually have headers, titles, even though in nearly every single other ah, rule right. they did. So maybe we could, do they have 4. to? 4.1 would be preparation of agenda, 4.2 would be agenda order, 4.3 would be. It's actually not preparation of agenda. Oh, oh right, you're yeah, right. 4.1 4. is, yes. 4.1 is two. preparation of agenda. Yep. 4.2 is agenda item. 4.3 yep. is. I hear what you're saying. Public yep. comment. Since we did that every place else, yeah. We need headings there, don't we? Yeah. And then there's also the heading, uh, you know, par line break, right. paragraph, you know, that kind of delightful formatting that can make you crazy. So um, are we keeping the deletion of executive session posting? Are those gone from here? So, Alyssa, this is one you, 4.4 executive session, yep. you deleted completely? Yep, this is a matter of mass general law and CMR. It's nothing to do with local I, I rules. totally get that it is. So do we not feel like we should reference anything or have what those requirements are. I'm okay with it, I just wanna make sure we know, because I think the reason we were thinking about putting it in was so that there was a place in the rules to say, oh, if we need executive session, here's sort of how we have to do it. And I, I get that yeah. this conflicts with everything else, which is why I'm okay with deleting it. I just wanna make sure. I, th I just thought we'd either have to make it longer or we'd have to just say executive session, see the law. <laughs> or and then I was just like, you know what, just take it out because just like later, I'm going to ask, and you may well disagree, that we want to take out the ethics section or make it shorter because, again, ethics laws are ethics laws. They have nothing to do with what we are saying are the rules. So executive session is so precise that I didn't want to misstate anything by not saying enough. And then the posting of agenda and packet section is, is moved to the new clerk section, which we have to come back to. Yeah, we have to come back to that. The other... The only other comment I had for posting of agenda and packets is when you moved it to the clerk section, you actually changed and deleted that those items go to the president too. Um, so we can fix that. So we, we need to fix it somewhere or add it into some. I think uh, fixing it back there makes okay. more sense than, than, than tacking it in here again because we want to make people just go look at that whole totality. And so... Um, and just, um, okay, so you'll, when we get to it, you'll when we come back to that. When we come we'll back fix to that. that. I just, I think we cross-reference later on this notion of three days and two days rather than repeating it every, so we've got to, uh, if, we, if we cross-reference to where it was, then it's moved, so we have to change the cross-reference to where it now is. I'm not sure why it moved, I'm, I'm willing to, live with it until I see where it moved. I kind of like things together, but it's it says the agenda and the packets have to be here. And the other thing I liked about it is just one page of a nice short agenda section. So formatting wise, I really like it, but I'm executive session where we are agreeing we delete it, right? Is that a, it's gone? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I kind of like the posting and agendas here. Um, so mark it as leaving it there, and when we get to the town council section, see if it seems duplicative. And then, and as long as it's worded exactly the same way in both places, we should be okay. If that's what makes people happy. It's gone. No, it's, it's they're, they're saying it because to do with us. everyone in the world but a few of us know what an executive session is, and we don't need to define it here. That's the definition of it. So I... See, uh, I, I, I feel like when you're deliberately putting something into a rule that not everyone knows, it's an actually a good thing because they don't know why we're going to an executive session, why we're doing it. So that's why I thought we had put it there. And I must say, almost, I have, I hate to make a statement like this because I'm a quantitative researcher, but my memory 
is that most town council rules of procedure include that paragraph, probably for this reason, so that the more general public understands what that session is. It doesn't say anything about what an executive session can actually do. It only talks about the technicality of how it can be done. I think if you want to include an appendix on what executive session currently is in Mass General Law for people's information so they could see how very limited it is in its use, but telling the public that you can only enter it after the council's convened, I don't think is helping the public learn anything. Actually, I think I think that is mainly what the public wants to know because they are frequently taken by surprise by executive session. Then they go home and look it up. How can they do that? You know, how can they be not transparent or whatever? And then this tells them how it happens and that there's a process and you know it's But it doesn't legal, say anything about what kinds of things it's for. Yeah, it, it doesn't say anything. And so that's what I'm saying. If we wanted to beef it up, I could understand that from a public education standpoint. But as it stands, it's not, to me, useful. As, I don't care if 40 other towns used it this way. It's not useful as a public reference. If there's, but it would have to be longer to talk about the kinds of things or something, because that's what people really want to know. They don't want to know that you have to call a meeting to order first. They, they, that's not what they want to know. They want to know why are you allowed to do this? And okay, it's for 10 so very are specific we making, reasons. Can I make a suggestion that we could keep then keep what was written? Because that, even if state law changes to lessen those how do you enter, we could still require a more stringent roll call vote and all if say state law changes about that. But then maybe add a sentence that says, executive session may only be entered into for reasons stated in yes. whatever the SMR, that, CMR that is. So with. we're not setting them out in case they change them, but then there's a knowledge of where you go to find that. that and would, I don't know what that, that reference is, fine. but. That part I would okay. understand. So, so Mandy, just give me the word. I'm, I don't, I hope you don't mind, but it's a lot easier for me to uh, do it if I do it right now. No, it's, it's executive session may only be entered into for reasons stated in probably 940 CMR something. Somebody will have to look it up. We'll have to look it up. Okay. So That makes it clear to the public. We're doing so this thing I as do part of an agenda I, and for, so you can I would only do it, do it for just before reasons. the word a majority? Stick, stick that section in? No. I'd put you it would do it after it as a separate paragraph. Okay. then that is what actually makes clear to the public that there are very limited circumstances under which this can be done. It isn't just, we can decide to have an executive session if we follow these rules. It's, you know, there's lots of rules about that. For, for reasons to, for reasons stated in. Yeah, and then we'll do it. Whatever the CMR reference is. Okay, got it. New color. We, we're, we're leaving it here. Okay. But we have to make sure it's consistent with the language in the new clerk section. Oh, yeah. So if you would please flag that, Kathy, so when we get back to yep. the clerk section that they say the exact same thing. So you highlighted the no later thans, Alyssa? Is that for consistency were you concerned about or was that just a concern about the wording in that 4.5? No later than three days, no later than two days prior. Um, since I moved it, I don't really okay. know. <laughs> I wanted to look at it over there again rather than okay. continuing to fuss with it here. I started with consistency and then I ended up with let's move it because we have a new section it fits okay. under. 
So just so that they match eventually whatever we determine in the other section. So I should take blue off. I'm one step behind. I was just finishing up the format. So the blue is there just so people saw that I reorganized okay. that section so that they didn't say, oh, I thought you only added a word here and there. So it, it really kind of hangs together differently now. So you moved out of the opening paragraph the time up to three minutes with a limit of one, and then you put it back in and added, the president is determined a shorter period is necessary for completion of the council business? Yes. It, it looked to me, and Alyssa clarify, that most of these changes were um, bulleting instead of yes. sentencing. Rearranging. And rearranging, not most of them, that was the goal. Most of them, right, yeah. as opposed to changing the content because I found, I just found it too hard to work with the, the text paragraph. But so I thought, okay, if people can sort of follow this down as to how they can expect things to happen when they're at a meeting, whether those are counselors or the, per, or the public, it's a lot more elaborate than most people's public comment sections. But I think that because it's such an important section to us, um, it would be good. But the one that. that the meaning does change is recognition. No one may speak, blah, 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 the little letter E. It says you can only submit a written comment to the clerk. During a meeting. During a meeting. Written comments during a meeting. I that just means they're not supposed to walk them around the front of the room. It, I think it goes with what our intention of that original language was. Okay. Um, I had questions about the preamble to all of A, the whole thing. Okay. I had two questions up there. Um, the first one was the addition of by phone. Um, I get what you're trying to do, Alyssa, yeah. but I think that sentence can now be read that because it refers to attend its meetings and welcomes their views, whether expressed in person by phone or by written communication could be read to mean that public <laughs> comment during meeting could be you by phone. You are not phone. going there. I we have a little red phone so, on the table. <laughs> so I would delete the phone <laughs> reference because I don't really want people to point to the rules and say, your rules allow us to public comment during a meeting by phone. Um, do, you know, do you know what the problem is? The problem is this. The problem is that this section, is, this rule is called public participation. We should have a preamble at the beginning of public participation before we get into regular meetings, mm. public hearings, public dialogue. That sentence is actually, that's what the problem is. That section is the preamble to the entire Rule 5. It belongs above 5.1 as a standalone sentence. Does that make, did, so to be clear, that's what I'm trying to get at. Look at all these wonderful ways of public participation. Okay, so, so it actually, that, so sent, that version of it just actually goes in front of 5.1. So, so maybe it's not a separate rule at all. It just take that sentence and it's move it. It's a preamble. Okay. Sort of, sort Between of rule five, public participation, and 5.1. Yes. Heading. Some I'd be okay with that. Yeah. That first sentence. I just, I read it and I was like, oh, we don't want that. Okay. And I'm not sure why we want to say issues of import. <laughs> As opposed to, you know, some other Welcome kind of issue. Views on relevant matters or something. Uh, on so on matters under the town councils. So it, so it, might says, be the more it important would say, thing to say council encourages all residents to attend its meetings and welcomes their views. Uh, uh, and welcomes their views on issues, right? Let's take uh, import out, right? Yeah, I would say unless we're going to say unless on we're going to try and say that they're within the council's jurisdiction. That I like. On matters within the council's jurisdiction. Yes. Within the council's 
And so once you fix that first sentence, then it can all go above in between the two headings and then start 5.1 with all regular meetings. You got it. Does that make sense? Yep. Yeah. Jurisdiction. Yeah, and makes. then my my next one for that all the regular meetings one is the town the just the sentence you added about promulgating rules. I don't think it's necessary here. We're clearly promulgating those rules. I know why you did it, but it's it's almost the circular. The charter says we may promulgate rules, and here's we and so we're saying in the rules we may promulgate rules, and now we're promulgating them. You know, it, to me it's so, it's an unnecessary sentence instead of just refer referencing the section. So could we take out, so the first sentence is now, of 5.1 is now all regular meetings shall provide for a period of public comment. Immediately after that, Just take charter. out that sentence but leave the charter yep, reference. That's fine. Yep. That makes sense. Perfect. Yep. These are the problems with the rules. Okay. This, I knew that no would bother you, Mandy looks Jill. like on my <laughs> screen. I, I almost like highlighted that one special. Uh, I knew that would bother uh, you. Take off the blue. Take off the gazillion track changes. Okay, so this now reads very simply, all regular meetings of the town council shall provide for a period of public comment. And then the charter and reference, the reference, and then it starts writing and char with a. Charter section 26D double I. And then it starts writing with and whatever the bullet is, or a. the letters, yep, or yep, the numbers, yep. or whatever you want to call them. I don't care what they are. And so the preamble mm -hmm. says the current Council encourages all presidents to attend its meetings and welcomes their view on matters within the council's jurisdiction, Wonderful. comma, whether expressed in person, by phone, or by written communication, period. That's nice. I love it. Any way you want to reach us. Okay. Um, any changes in the blue highlighted edited list? As I take the blue highlights off it first. So basically, that's where I kind of rejiggered the, okay, we, we talked in a couple different places about how many times you get to talk, three minutes, et cetera, and I just reorganized it, and hopefully it makes yes. sense now. So to, that's what I'm just, uh, yeah, I'm just asking way. people to look at uh, the changes. E-C, because <laughs> both sets had letters. Um, the addition you made of deliberation you know what I'm trying on to public get comment there. must maintain. No, um, so I know what, I think I know what you're trying to get at, um, but... I don't even really want to imply that we deliberate on the public comments yeah. that were made at a meeting, I, I which is we, why I would delete the whole I, sentence. Yeah, I don't so I had it in there as a warning, <laughs> like as a red flag, because I've seen it other places devolve into, well, let's just go ahead and talk about this now because the counselors are asking clarifying questions. And I know that when you have the president in control, it works great. But I was really just throwing it up as a red flag. If you think it makes it worse to have it in there, yep. then I'm this okay with taking is, it out. But I think I had it in there more as an explanation for the public as to why we aren't, because that, as Darcy frequently points out, what the public doesn't understand what we're doing. And so that's why I wanted to be able to say, we don't talk about your public comment because I, we have to follow I, the I think if law. you're okay with taking it out, it works without it. Well, it works fine without it. It just isn't as clear to the public why we don't have a dialogue. The, the E says e intention. says we're not going to engage in discussions or debate with the council. Yeah. It's for the council to hear comments from the public, not to engage in discussions or debate with the council. But that would be could be because we're mean as opposed to because we're actually trying to follow open meeting law. That's what I was trying to clarify is that we're not doing it capriciously. Mm -hmm. Because there are people who say, well, why do I come in and give a public comment, blah, 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 and then you just like don't do anything with it. Um, it's like, well, because we can't really, because if you brought up a sensitive issue, we could, need to post it could for everybody we just to talk about. add a comma after that first E in compliance with open meeting law? Sure. <laughs> or in order to comply with open meeting law or something? Not yeah. Engage in discussions or debate with the council. In comma, compliance. In compliance with open meeting Ooh, law. Ooh, I like that something. because that, because it doesn't draw too much attention to it that way. And that way, even if, that way the president doesn't yeah, every single time have to go into changes, an elaborate explanation. Changes can make. That makes a lot of sense to me. Why, why, well, why I just, would our engagement in discussion when we're all there why, violate open meeting law? We haven't published the topic 48 hours ahead. 
and unless it's something that needs immediate attention, the AGO's handbook suggests that we not talk about it because it had, because the whole rest of the public doesn't know we're going to talk it, about so, it. So what's interesting is in we could, given the way we've opened up public comments on an action item or a presentation, we are within the realm of then being able to talk about it. Right. right? You know, so by saying in compliance, we're allowed to do it when we've already got it on the agenda. So it's more the general, um, I'm bringing up uh, the parking policy when it's not in the agenda or the, the speed right. limit of the yeah. streets and yeah. things like that. So I think because we've opened up that other public comment period, we're al allowing, it's subtle, but we are allowing interaction on those items. So. And I think this protects us both ways, yep. in that we do that, which protects us one way because we've already put it on the agenda. And then we protect ourselves here by saying we're going to follow the rules. I'm sorry, Lynn, did you have something? Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to understand E, A, and B, um, under E, A and B, because in the practice we've been following, we don't do anything other than listen. And so I was just, that was written not with me. Um, so, but I was just altering it a little bit to, to edit it. So maybe other people could speak to why they wanted to bring that forward. So there was some concern. So inclusion of this um, was some concern that if someone makes a public comment on something like, um, I'll give an example we had at the Charter Commission. We regularly had, well, I didn't see those documents online. And so this would allow someone to say, here's where you go on the website mm -hmm. to find those documents in response to that public comment. Um, that's for information. Um, the rec you know, for the clarifying questions, if someone makes a comment and and I'll I'll give an example, I think it was at I don't know which meeting it was at where someone came up to make a comment while I think Dave Zomek was presenting something, so it might have been JCPC um, or something, and I was completely confused as to what that person was even trying to get at. This would allow someone to say, could you restate that so I understand what you're even trying to say? And that's why I said, that's why I added in the words recognized by the president, Lynn, so that this would enable a, a practice that has happened elsewhere in this room, but not with this desk set up, is that during public comment, um, somebody would do exactly that, and we'd, we'd be like, what are they even talking about? And so one person would raise their hand and ask the chair, the president in this case, and say, could you ask them it, mm -hmm. to explain better what they're talking about? Another thing that would also happen is we would say, could you, the president, consider putting this on a future agenda? We can talk about that at another time. And that was a way that the president could recognize that a counselor might very well know why a person's coming. They're not expressing it well, and you're trying to help them get their need met. It might be one we want to just highlight in yellow, those two I, I just, I yeah. just. I just highlighted both of those. And I made it clear that it was I, recognized I, by the president, not that just anybody could, not just that any of us could just start talking during public comment, but that we always go through the president. I, I feel like it creates an expectation during public comment that just isn't re realistic. Okay. And, and it creates a situation where somebody does believe that they can come forward and make some public comment and they're going to get a response in the meeting. And that's just a very different practice. So are you saying, Lynn, so it's not at all a different practice than what the select board's done. It's a completely different practice than what the town council's been doing so far. So are you saying that, and, and I don't, I, I can totally argue either point, but are you saying if someone comes in and says, I'm really upset about the homeless shelter, and you know the town manager's working on a thing, you as president could say, I believe the town manager would like to make a statement about this during that time, or that's past practice, or you, current practice, you would just say, thank you for saying that. So are you saying that you don't ever want to be able to give staff the opportunity to say something? Because when they come in and say how much some particular staff member stinks, it, it might 
behoove you to be able to say, the town manager or you as president would like to say, we don't discuss personnel issues here. Or the town manager might say, no, that person got, you know, left town two weeks ago. Are you really, are you saying instead that you would rather that we don't do anything during public comment other than listen? Because I, I think that, I think your point about expectations is entirely reasonable. It's just a matter of what are those expectations? We should manage those. It, the irony is on the two or three occasions where somebody was inaccurate and or um, tried to engage in a direct discussion, the people commenting were either very angry or they were out of line. And in one instance, it was the person that accused us of not reading our minutes, mm -hmm. and it was 12 o'clock at night, mm -hmm. and it wasn't true. But to engage him would have just incited further issues. And then the other one was the most recent situation we had, and it was at a full council meeting, when the woman who came in and sat next to David and made the comment and so forth. Um, and, you know, David, whom I think was familiar with the person, I think tried to calm them down, but in fact, they just started into their next statements, which were not particularly relevant nor appropriate. And so there's a point at which uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm betwixt and between on this, because there's mm -hmm. times I do yeah, think I, somebody I, comes in. I think in. I know those two instances, and then I can think of several others that we, in our practice, we've actually done this. We said, are you talking about X, Y, or Z, or, um, right. you know, with, with the very young person who often gives comments, Dorothy did a response, you know, we, we've done some you know, welcoming or appreciative or said, you know, perhaps the town manager could. I, I'm just when, I, when is the date for such I, and such? Yeah. Yeah. I, I would point out that both of these are mays, not yep. shalls. Yep. So yes. it's, a, it's one of the few places we actually use may yeah. in this document. So, so I just, okay. it's optional. I just no. yellow highlighted and, and it. Let me just also say that during the period of public comment, during public forums, we actually want to have more we of this. We want to do this, yeah. And so maybe we leave it like this, and I just have to understand your intent. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. and future presidents have to understand your intent. And, and the fact that may, it may. really is really <laughs> clear. To give you that option, but that doesn't mean you can't take a completely hard line. It's just that you have that option. Thank you. Under limited circumstances. And yeah, it's totally at the discretion of the president. So that's the point, right? Okay, leave it as it is then. Just clarification, are we using written comments possibility for people who write their comments and give it to the clerk? That was covered. And if you do, you know, could you just highlight that? Because I don't think you're making the actual Show me, uh, Shalini, show me where we're... Um, So I, I'm just going to highlight it to make sure we uh, know. Oh, you wanted it to be highlighted. I'm yeah, sorry. Just, just, highlighting just, means different things in different contexts. We're yeah, highlighting yeah, it yeah. as a we're special in yellow highlight. Yeah. Yes. Yellow. No, no, yellow means we're a happy, to our attention. We're a happy, it doesn't necessarily mean we hate it. Or no, it means, yep. it means it's new or it's somewhat different than standard. It's special. Yellow is special. Blue is disagreement. That's a future that might not even end up in the rules because it's the the right. the, the, the the emails we get. That, yeah, on that, that, that's that's, a that's going into a whole different report. kettle of fish. But that should be on our list of future. Can we yeah, put that? Yeah, good? It is. Okay, it is. is that it, that's on your the Mandy Joe list. It's on Mandy's list. That I'll excellent, forward. excellent. Okay, so this is this next one is the one where. We have it in two places, right? Yeah. So under public, are we done? Have we skipped down to public dialogue? Oh, no, no, no. no, no where are we at? After the last highlights, right? This, no, yes. 
multiple public comment periods yep. on an agenda. Right. So what we say in the nice short agenda is additional public comments, colon, when presentations made or topic at, at, for the first time, the present shall. Um, this new one says, first of all, I noticed that it says may rather than shall. So we do have yes. a shall. Well, that, that would be a question. Is well, we, it we has both right now. It has a may first and it has a shall later, but I think we agreed when we first proposed this, it was a shall. So no, they're actually two different things. In addition to the public comment period, which I felt need to ask because we have the general public comment period typically held near the beginning, the president may allow for comments from the public related to specific agenda items after yes. council chat. That's actually separate from they shall do that when it's a first time issue. If it's a second or third time issue, okay. this allows a may. Okay. If they see there's 25 people in the room and they feel like we have time, it's a may. But the shall was the definite part, right, from the agenda section. Okay, so I'll just, for so we can keep moving on, I'm going to take the wording where we did when a presentations, major topics, or action items, just make that the last set. So we repeat it. So right now we'll, yes. we'll live with repetition. So we can, does that make sense? And then we can move yeah. on. Yes. So, okay. Excuse me, is the word major meant to, uh, to um, we, elaborate we, on both topic and action items? We right? changed that wording. We're okay. changing it to presentations, new topics, or action items. Maybe we always kept the word major. Did we keep it? I would encourage some kind of modifier. So, because so I had suggested presentation, I had suggested the language when presentation and discussion items or action items appear on the agenda for the first time, the president so shall she include. She took, she took the action, the, the word and, major and away yeah, from Yeah, I think action. you still left it in there, okay. but. Um, no, I, I, I took the word action out, you know, in. Major out? In, in okay. the other, it's just. This was a, just a moving around. I didn't rewrite yeah, that so this. Lynn, it will read when presentations, it says major topics, so let me take major yeah. out. Uh, presentation and discussion items is how it's listed in the agenda when, section. When presentations, topics, or action items appear on the first time, will be the, it, it no. won't have an adjective? Use presentation and discussion items because that's the title of the agenda section, and then or action items as the title. I guess what I'm one, there's sometimes that we have action items that are literally bring something up and refer, and we're not even, mm. we're not gonna do public comment. Yeah, I hear that. Yeah. And so somehow or another, I believe you need to let, give the president the opportunity to decide where in fact we need to have so, public comment. So what were, did you like the word major or, 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 or what do we do? Um, to say it's not every single thing. So could we say when presentation and discussion items or major action items? It is a referral a major action item? <laughs> Since it's coming we, back for so. final, right. yeah. There are times that it is. For example, let me just give you an example right now. On Monday night, the town manager is going to give us a brief presentation of the budget. There are multiple opportunities for the public to comment on the budget. And rather than take time on Monday night, what we're planning is only questions and comments from the council. Because, and, and at the very top of the agenda, we list all of the times when we have finance committee meetings, our committees of the whole, that different item, and what items will be discussed at those times. And then of course we have a public hearing on the budget, and we have a public forum on capital, and we have a time when now the budget will come to the council, which will be on the 3rd of um, June. So opening public comment for the council, for the budget on Monday night is, um, I think, defeating the purpose of doing that. And then later on under action items, 
because we never did this, and to be honest with you, thank heavens we didn't. Um, we never we never acted to automatically refer the budget to the finance committee. And the good news is we didn't do it. And the reason it's good news is because if we had, the, but the council would have had to act by May 30th on the budget. And there is no way that we're gonna be ready for that. So we're, our plan is to have it come forward on, on June 3rd so, for action. So what you're pointing to is the place where the first time is not necessarily the best time because you're gonna have multiple opportunities? That's true. And then there's other times where, frankly, it's not a major discussion item. Yeah. So then ma the major when we're referring it to a committee or something is not yeah. is the distinction between. I mean, I can, I can the draft agenda. Yeah, no, it is, it is, so what, what wording? It's not, it's, in other words, we're not even, uh, I think we need to, to be clear that there's opportunities for individual topics of both discussion and presentation and discussion and action where the public will have an opportunity to comment on those particular ones. What we try to do is identify those at the top of the agenda under public comment. Can we leave it as worded now with a blue highlight for going forward to the council of, or maybe green or some other color that says we should reconsider some of this wording for more nuance? That's fine. Yep. And I'm gonna, and lead in both sections. I'm gonna do it in both sections and uh, I'll figure out <laughs> what, what uh, color shows up. Green, actually, you can't read. The, the green's too dark, but I'll, fi I'll find a color. <laughs> Trying to capture that nuance is what we're attempting to do. We wanna give you freedom to do things that make sense. And, and I personally think that the suggestion you made early on in the, in the start of the council has been very helpful and it's worked well for us and the public. I do want to ask one other question while we're on this issue. Sure. Um, it is possible, it, it, it is possible that the public may want to comment on appointments, and yet appointments are in a different part of the agenda. So for example, this so, week, the TMAC, I'm sorry, not TMAC. Um, ECAC. ECAC. <laughs> EC, ECAC <laughs> is coming up for appointment with the, from the recommendation of OCA to the council. We actually won't take that up until the section of appointments. And you've actually been doing a very nice job of at the very beginning saying if you want to comment on this topic, we'll take in comments for that here and yeah. not here. So it's, it's right. allowed. Uh, all I'm saying is right now, all you suggest no. is that public comment is only going to be right. for discussion and action, but in fact, it, maybe it should say in parentheses, including appointments. But do we want to include appointments? I think that would surprise a lot of people. I personally would prefer not to, but I also. Um, I don't think we should call it out for that exact reason, because because I think we have a I think we have you know the freedom of speech, and <coughs> the we're allowed to make rules about public comments and the practical reality of living in a small town, kind of thing, all competing with each other there. So I would hope that. Right now, when you call out on the agenda, we're gonna take public comment on this section, we're gonna take public comment on that section, so your general public comment needs to be not something that's in one of those two sections. I would just hope that we wouldn't even call appointments <coughs> out, maybe just leave it unsaid. So, so I, sure. I would just point out that the proposed rules before the shalls on presentation, discussion, and action do say the president may allow for comments from the public related to specific agenda items after counselors have had the opportunity to speak, so we're yes. not prohibiting yep. Right. you We're from putting it in any it. other section, either ahead of time or during the meeting when you start finding something out. Um, 
but it's not a shall, it's a may. Can we take a yes. two minute break so I can go to the water fountain? I didn't, yes. I forgot I think, my I water, I forgot my water bottle. Break. How about a three minute break? Okay, while I we're just, at it. I literally forgot my water bottle and I. So this is a continuation of the Tuesday. Yeah, I turned it off. This, I said that as we were leaving. The, um, this is continuation of the Tuesday, April 30th, Rules of Procedure Committee. We took a five minute recess and we are now back and might potentially be going till one o'clock. So where we left off is, Kathy, did you get a chance to, because you're like having to make these yeah, notes as we talk. At, we're at public here, bottom of page nine, but it's 5.2 is where we're starting. So we're at public hearings, good. Okay, so I know, it's so clean. Then we're moving quickly to public dialogue. I just had two. Uh, and the, this is the hour, right? Yeah, the one was change it from 45 minutes to an hour because we've yeah. done that. Um, the second one was at the end um, where Alyssa was like, what does this mean? Can we Minutes. just change all public dialogue sessions shall comply with open meeting law? That would require minutes be taken and they'd be published for that's what we advanced, need to right? that's what I was trying to get get to the differences were we trying to split the difference here or are we saying these are posted meetings I think we wanted them as posted meetings and then that's great and then that um, then I think that and I still think that sentence important so that people understand that that's what kind of meetings those are but also that we can expect someone to take minutes at them which yes, so the a whole public dialogue. dialogue is a yellow Which highlight. version are you working on? CSABB? Yes. yes. Yep. Okay. I, I had my own changes to them, so. <laughs> but, right, and so I can't see Mandy Jo's changes, okay. but those are the two so, that, that so, I pointed out in So what I, I just made, uh, the 45 minutes became the hour before, and then the last sentence says all public dialogue sessions come to comply with open meeting law. So. Tell me, so those changes are now public, in. Yeah. That, that was all it. public dialogue sessions shall comply with open meeting law. Right, that's, that's what I just phrase, I put right? in, yep. Cool, that's simple. And also that they're posted. And they need to be posted 48 hours in advance with an agenda or topic, as Alyssa would say, topics for discussion. Yeah, you know she would. So are you seeing them as kind of public forums but no presentation? Uh, well, because public, yes and no, because public forum had this, we talk for X and you get, this is really a free forming and we found it in uh, actually one town, Portsmouth, New Hampshire. Mm -hmm. And so we put it in for two times a year and this would be one that's definitely yellow shaded. So we might want to have, um, I don't know what, you know, you know, but, but that was exactly that it's a more free flowing, less uh, uh, us talking and others responding. This is like spoilers. Say, You'll similar actually to district understand meetings, what our but, thinking yeah. was, Lynn. This is great. This is spoilers. This is awesome. And as Shalini said, this is definitely yellow. Yes. Yeah. We get credit. Happy yellow things. Well, it, it, it's also something that if people hate the idea, it'll be deleted. But, and we had X times a year, and we decided one was too few, and two was probably the right place to start <laughs> if we were gonna do it. Yeah. One small request on 5-7 open meetings. Can we just get rid of the word further so that the charter provides for open ah, meetings? right. Right, that was more of a description of. Yeah. Okay. See? See how awesome we are? As opposed to, we don't need that word anymore. Did you leave work sessions in? Yep. It is under public participation. Uh, work, uh, no. work sessions are down on- Meetings. They're under meetings. They're under we? meetings. Because we already did work sessions. We did them, number four. Where'd we put them? They're in number three. Three. They're in three council meetings. As Thank opposed you. to dialogue, which still counts as a council meeting, but is, is listed in this other section instead because it seems to make more sense to have it in this section. Lying law. 
They were. I mean, fifty percent of the way through. In theory, in theory. So, if someone could be prepared, not this minute, but if someone could be prepared to explain why it is that it makes more, and I'm fine with it, but it, why it makes more sense to have our happy yellow public dialogue be here rather than as a type of council meeting, because it's not the same as all these things that are required. It's meant more for forum -y. It's more closely related to a forum it's than more it is related. to a retreat for the council. Mm -hmm. I think that's why we have it there, whereas the work sessions or were or like or retreats council. for counselors. Oh, what I'm trying to say is yeah, so. these are types of council right. meetings yeah. that are like posted meetings, and one type is arguably a dialogue. Right. But then, I'm fine with having it over here because I think it flows better with these kinds of things. And, and we actually mention it and we stripped out the thing. It says under meetings, it says public eye dialogue C rule 5.3. Yeah. So, we, so we didn't ignore it. We, we so it, it, it all fits together fits. so people can look for it both kinds of places depending on where their head's at. I think that makes a lot of sense. Good job. So you didn't like the word personalities? I hate the word personalities. Oh, <laughs> What's up with that? Over and over again. Can we oh, maybe I, say I, it once? No, I no, I, I agreed with that. So it's um, I started. I didn't go ahead and edit it. It's because oh. this has been put together from so many documents with so many people with so many good intents that of course we ended up with some duplicate wording. That's uh, fine. No. It's just where does it best fit now, given where we are? I think when I saw your comment that if it stayed in the very first paragraph, it could disappear from everything else. So like B could just say discussion should be centered on issues not used on becoming or abusive language, period. Sounds good. Right? Yeah. That works. Okay, so it goes in just that very one time. And let me just see whether that works for the others as well. The next personalities. The public comment shall focus on specific issues, period. Right? Yep. Yeah. Because having it in the preamble, so to speak, I think makes it clear. And I forget the other place it appeared, but I, when I looked at it, removing it from each of those solved the. It's way it, down okay, under 6.3. On Councillors should confine their remarks in debate to pending question and, and period, right? Pending question, right? Just we can get rid of don't go off topic and don't shout at each other. Bubble. Which one was that one? Uh, Way under down. six oh, three I. yeah, I so sa same thing just got avoid reference to personalities. Because beca just it's after the word question, it's a period because period after question. because the very first paragraph, the way we wrote it applies to all of us, doesn't it? Am I, I just. Because that's general rules. Because right? it's counselors, residents, and everyone should act this way. So we're all supposed to avoid personalities. So we don't have to say counselors should avoid it, residents yeah. should avoid it. OK. I liked your during council meeting change in 6-1. You might have already mm -hmm. flew through Kathy and accepted that. Right shall not hold private conversations instead of saying in discussion, I just said during meetings so that it's a little clearer what we're talking about. I think right. it means the same thing. Yeah. It's just a different phrase. So, um, what do you think that we should, um, we didn't include our most popular rule that we de decided on our very first day about counselors, how they address each other. Oh. Yeah, no, it seems like it should be under maybe debate decorum. Um, but I. Ooh, yeah, that does seem like the spot for it, doesn't it? Oh, I guess I'm not the person. Council members signed up. Oh, right. Oh, right, yeah. Yes, there we go. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Yeah, so um, um, there's something like ouncers shall. Can we just make it last? I mean, I know that, that it doesn't exactly flow, but can we just make it whatever is K now or whatever and just kind of tack it on the end because it's a new thing and, and 
the other things are still there, or do we have to like really call it out as like its own section? Oh, I don't think there needs to be a new section. Yeah. It's no, just which it letter it should be. We could put it as K, and if just, in a week we just determine we want to reorder the whole thing. Yeah, right. but six three K is going to be a new for thing. now. For now, yeah. just so we have a place for it. But if it seems to flow better in a different spot, shall we address each other by first name? Well, the only other thing, I don't want to, so to not make this overly complex, but. There's one thing that you can do as well. I don't, I, I don't know that. Did, did you have anything well, the president is the one who's actually saying our names. We're not actually supposed oh, okay. to be talking about each other during. The president shall address council with all persons. As opposed to referring to each other, because generally, okay. we're kind of supposed, we don't generally say, I mean, sometimes we do. We'll Wait, say, well, oh, Steve I, said. Oh, I think we say that all the time. So we do say the president and yeah. Or we talk yeah. about each other. We say, I agree. I yeah. Agree so that. let, let yeah. as long as it says president yeah. first, so that works. Great. That's great. Perfect. I added that because that is something that, one, was in fact recommended to us at some point, but has also been something that has been traditional in Amherst, and so I think we should decide if we want to address it. We don't have to, but it has been a thing that we have used in Amherst, both at town meeting and at other meetings. It, it was in an earlier draft, and we took it out because we decided when everyone at the school meeting broke into clapping, we, we kind of like that. So. We clearly wouldn't like it if they all oh, booed God. us out of the room. Right, you clearly wouldn't like it when they start hissing. You've clearly yeah. not been in a yeah. meeting like so, that, so which we, I have been. So we thought we should just leave it out because we have other wording that says disruptive behavior. D disturb, anything that disturbs our peace can be removed, but we didn't say you just, you, you know, you've got to be. Uh, I'm going to disagree. I mean, we can mark it however you want, but I'm going to disagree with that completely because it is an incredible burden to put on the person who's presiding over the meeting to decide that if 25 people are snapping their fingers or three people are loudly booing, that they really want to embarrass those people by calling them out for disruptive behavior as opposed to reminding them that we don't allow for audible things, which is traditionally what the moderator did and it usually settled things right down. I would, I'm Could really this be one that's an option one, on option two? Option one is this, option yes. two is zero? I would, I would prefer so to do we, that. With a vote This is of, really important to me. I, I don't know what our vote is, but we should take a vote. If we do that tonight. Okay, so I move to include the present, sh those present shall not engage in audible demonstrations of approval or disapproval. Yeah, I, I guess. I, I feel like it's overkill the, to include this when we already have the other piece and so if we're going to vote, I would vote uh, for taking this out. So, so the motion is to include... The motion is to include Those the language present, shall, present engage shall engage in, in demonstrations of... How many uh, vote in favor of that? That would just be me. something I think the larger council should decide, and if I get outvoted, I'm fine with that. It, it's a different judgment call. It's a different judgment call to say, you are impeding the orderly procedures of the meeting. You, we are now going to recess and adjourn. That, that's a whole nother level of Okay, um, I just, I will fix how I do this later. I just need some guidance on it. This is the only time we've got a, um, we're including something we disagree on, but there's, the option is to delete it. So the option would be. To not the, make an audible demonstration. The, the, the first option is to not have this. I think option one might be included, option two is delete. So but we've always done the one that got the most votes first. Yeah. So the option one is to say that E covers it. That's the way to say it. Option one says E is sufficient. Option two says add an additional sentence about this because they're two different 
I perceive them to be two different levels of moderating people's behavior. I think of the second one as the nuclear option. Okay, I've, I've got it. It's weird looking, but we'll, we'll leave it the way But it yeah, is. the first one should be to leave it just how yep. it is. And I wanted to talk about the new section. Yes. The OML or whatever, the guide you, you copied right. and pasted. I would delete it again with the, I, I know the reasoning behind it of it, this is the audio video recording and how you go about doing it. If it's all directly taken from an OML guide, which is slightly even different than CMRs, regulations and all, it's... We it's, don't usually reference CMR. We only started doing that with this document. No, I, I know, the, the but um, the guide that. can change even more frequently than the regulations do. Um, <laughs> I, I'm, I, don't, I don't know what the law is on how people have to conduct themselves or how we have to announce recording and all of that. that is, that's, this, that's why it says this it's is the, the law. guide. That's um, also the law. Do we know the legal reference? Yes, MGL 30A, section 20, F. We don't. Oh, there it is. Yes. Okay, sorry. So this is the plain English wording from the guide. You're right, but we've used plain English wording of no, the I charter know. as well. And so the reason this is important, I believe, is because, one, we're under a new scenario where people who are coming to meetings have never been to meetings before. It is also true that we're supposed to announce the recording at the beginning of the meeting. People are supposed to tell us, and people are not supposed to walk around taking photographs during the meeting. And so if we say this stuff up front, then people know what the expectation is rather than the president having to call recess and say, oh, this new photographer didn't know, they weren't supposed to walk around during the meeting, blah, 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 blah. Also, people are supposed to know when they're being recorded, so. Yeah. It just seems like people should know. There is a law that requires people to notify us when we're taking a photo in a meeting? No. What it says is that they're not to be disruptive during a meeting. There is no law that requires that, actually, that I'm aware of that's ever been used in Massachusetts Th at public meetings. This one's just for audio video recording. It's, I didn't read anything about photographs. I'm, re I'm referring to oh, okay. photographers being disruptive. And so the, the point of putting this in here is saying, if you're recording a meeting, you've got to talk to the chair. You've got to make some reasonable accommodations. We've had the TV channel come and set up over here without checking in with anybody first. The, these are actual... Rules are about actual practical things that happen. That has happened. Channel 3 has set up themselves over there, and that's something they need to work out. You would think, right, with the president, they can't just do it because it's a public meeting. There are, in fact, some restrictions the president can place on them. It's not a free-for-all. I, I don't know why they can't just do it if it's a public meeting. Um, because the law says there are restrictions. It's not a free-for-all. They can still record there's restrictions on from where. I think is what Alyssa's getting And it has at. to be, an, right, they can record, it has to be announced, and it has to be arranged so that it's not disruptive, so as not to interfere with the meeting. So how about um, just a member of the public with their iPhone? They're supposed to tell the, the president that they're doing that. Because the person next to them might not know that they're being recorded when they're talking to their neighbor. There's also an issue of anybody under 18 without per oh. signed permission of parents. Being in the picture, yes. Hmm. Mainly it's a no surprises thing. It's just a no surprises. I include, like, I, man, you're absolutely right, Mandy Jo, that I took the more user friendly version out of the guide rather than just the the straight MGL. I, I had missed the MGL reference, so I, I, if people are fine with including it, I am too. I, I wanted some of that. I would change all the words chair to presiding officer if that's how we're moving towards thing. That's a great idea. Thing. Um, Please do. Because that's just how the convention was used. We're trying not to use chair. Yeah. Yes. So exactly. that's my only request if it's staying in is substitute presiding officer for chair. That would be great. I think it occurs one, two, three, four, five six times in that paragraph. I, I wanted to quote it without changing it. I, I <laughs> so get that it, you could I get it, it, I get it. But you're right, using it should be. So if a person wants to um, uh, videotape or audio tape, or you know, just 
video with an iPhone, all they have to do is notify. Right. And, but if they want to stand right there, then she can say, no, you can't stand there to do it. You need to go sit in the audience to do it. Trust me, I've had that happen. <laughs> so, <laughs> we've had an amazing amount of decorum at our pre as our town council meetings so far. Far more decorum than I'm used to. Oh, and so if when we're done with that section, then 6.4 is where I think I just missed a meeting or something. So if we're done with, because okay, you. So I'm going to take the shading off of this, and I'm not going to do it right now, so I can catch up um, st or stay with you. Um, presiding officer goes in where chair is. I was fixing formatting on option one and two, um, and that's it on this, right? And I take shading off. Okay. And we already fixed during meetings, during council meetings. We took oh, personality. Oh, everything, yeah. yeah. Cool. And you added in the first name part. Thank you. So 6.4. Yeah, so what happened there? Um, Clearly that was when I was visiting someone in the hospital or something. So I don't remember that conversation. You don't like the uh, ability to appeal the president's decision is what I got gathered from your comments. Um, Correct, because it's not based on it, either the charter or on law. It's not in the law. charter, but Robert's rules do allow appeal, appeals of president's decisions. Um, so this sort of just tracks Robert's rules. You can appeal the decision of a chair on any decision, so that would also be that. Um, so I think the question is, do we want the counselors to be able to override the chair, the presiding officer, on um, the questions of order. And at town meeting, which doesn't follow Robert's rules, right. it follows town meeting's time, the, these questions were, the, there was no appeal. Right, there was the sole and so moderator's decision. Everything we're silent on does not mean that Robert's rules applies. It doesn't mean if we don't say anything about appeal that Robert's rules means you can appeal. That's, that's not how our reference to Robert's rules works. So if we don't say anything about appeal, somebody can't say, oh, but Robert's rules says I can appeal. It doesn't, if it doesn't say anything about appeal in here, I would argue that that's not true. You cannot pull Robert's rules into every conversation that isn't mentioned in our rules. Section 1.4 says the council shall refer to Robert's rules or subsequent additions in all questions of parliamentary procedure and points of order not otherwise provided for by the charter rules, bylaw, or special rules. So you're saying we should, but, but practically speaking, we are not going to go to Robert's rules for every Thing we don't like a current rule in here to see if we can find it to fit somewhere in Robert's well, so rules. So if it's not set forth here, then Robert's rules, if it's allowed in Robert's rules, I would say it would be allowed. So if we don't want it to be allowed, then we should proactively, we should say, proactively say that it's not. Say it's not because otherwise you okay. default to the Robert's rules default. I think it's a stretch, but yeah, I, I understand Maybe the point we, of saying it proactively we one way or the other. Six four. Six four, just the blue. So the, I the have whole, just the, the blue. Sort of. You guys yeah. agreed that you wanted an appeal process. I don't agree that we want an appeal process. I do understand the point of having um, it say one way or the other so that nobody thinks they should default to Robert's rules in the absence of discussion about the appeals process. So if you just did it the way I did, then some people like Mandy Jo would go and find it in Robert's rules and appeal it. And I would say, hey, we didn't talk about it at all. Therefore, you shouldn't be dragging out Robert's rules on everything that we don't mention in our rules because we don't use it. So that's town meeting all over. If, I mean, those of us who've been in town meeting know how that works all the time. But it's that the moderator would decide, nope, that's not an issue right now, or yep, we're going to go back and restate that vote, or here, we're going to read the motion again because people don't know where we're at. What would the president like it to say? Uh, no, I think... While the president's sitting right here, I think we could ask them. I'm, let's do a little role play here. Okay, so things are getting a little out of hand, and I say um, we're, going to, I, we're going to cease discussion, okay? And what this... Um, 
what the strike down part would have allowed is that the council could appeal that. Yep. They would the councilor would say, I appeal the decision of the chair. And then there's a vote by the whole council as to whether to uphold the decision or go the opposite way. So it, it, or, or reject it. It enfranchises council members if something. Mm -hmm. If they want to continue debate or right. whatever. Yeah. But they can do that now without this section existing. I mean, there's nothing stopping us under free speech laws for me to say, hey, are you sure we, we were done with that? That's totally okay. That's not a formal appeal. Right, but the appeal means if, say, Lynn stops it without a, stops debate on something because she's just not liking where it's going or it's going too long and people, and the council keeps rejecting a motion to close debate and she just decides to close it and you can always say, I don't agree with it, but without the ability to appeal, the council has no ability to say, we still want to continue this despite what you want, Madam President. I, I, th I think it's strong permit, strongly permissive and unlikely to be used very often, but that's a, exactly the reason I put it in. It's I, protective. Yeah, I have no problem with it. I really don't. Um, I have no problem with the whole thing. So then I think it just needs to be its own sentence. That's fine. That's I had I rewritten that sentence to, a, you know, ending the sentence where you sort of did all questions of order, period, and then moving the charter reference up to that. And then a counselor may yes. appeal the president's decision. Because the charter the reference was incorrect. To the full council or something or to the, or may appeal okay. the decision so of the chair. So I don't know Mandy, what it would be. Just the charter so reference do it. was so wrong So I'm, I'm moving charter section 2.2B after all questions, questions of, order, of order, period. And then the charter yes. reference. And then start a new sentence. And then a new sentence that is Instead a counselor may appeal the president's decision. You might be able to the council. You and don't want to say full council because then you're implying you need a minimum of seven votes even if only seven people are there. Yeah, you need to figure out how to phrase that. And then it needs to be yellow. Or you could say also. a counselor may appeal the president's decision you want to say formally well, appeal? May, would that, what is it? Would that make it clearer that you're like, I'm appealing what, What's as the wording in Robert's hey, rules? It's I appeal the decision of the chair. Um, I may appeal the president's decision on questions of order because I think that's the one thing. Because I think practically speaking, people to the no one in this room is going to have Robert's rules on them except right. you. And so, appeal, so when somebody says, I want to do the appeal, they want to know how to do it. So is there a way to, to include that in a sentence to make it clear that okay. that's what you're doing? So, so it, what, right now I have the, a counselor may appeal the president's decision on questions of order to the council, no other business. Um, so it's an emotion to appeal. Yeah. It, it would be a motion to appeal, yeah. It, that, it's that, worded as I appeal the is? decision of the chair is how, yeah. how it is. Yeah. So it's not I move to appeal. It's just I appeal the decision of the okay. chair. It's, but it's, appeal is a real it's, word. Yeah. It's, it's a meaningful it's word. The, it's the word than... you use when you make okay, that So, so then motion. I think this works, right? As rewritten. I would just like it to be yellow to draw attention to uh, it, that it's yeah. not in the charter and that not every, oh. somebody has, other people have variations on this and it's in Robert's rules, right? And so yep. we can just explain yep. it no, to people it to see yellow. if they want to beef it's it up. It's yellow. It is Make yellow. sure it the makes sense to all 13 so they know how to use it. Got it. <laughs> That'd be great. And then I just added the charter's reference to the next sentence because that's not just our rule. That's actually what the charter says in terms of participating in voting. We didn't make So I'm uneasy about 6.5 if we're done with 6.4. So what I understand you've done here is you just removed the words that we had in our original uh, interim rules. But that's, I don't really I just care. moved, a, took out the middle section. Yeah, so you it's took like out you're going to go off and you're going to look at ethics and conflict of interest. No, I know. I just, but you know, I copied and pasted that from our interim rule. I'm fine with the. I'm agreement. totally fine with the rewritten language. Okay. I, I think, I think the interim fine. rules we just said, sure, looks good. <laughs> but 
now that we have a chance to revisit it. I think that's helpful. Good. So should we add appeal in here somewhere that it's not actually a motion though? It's a, well, but a point I, of order is not a motion either. I, I think it reads just fine because almost all our rules, we're going to have to live with them and figure out how they work. I'm just talking about item seven, if we're supposed to add the word appeal in we there, could just, just like we have a point of order. We could get rid of the word president in the title and just say preservation of order, right to speak. No. I'm sorry, where are we? I was totally a six point four. Oh, I'm just, I thought we were done I thought with that's that. where you were referring to the appeal. Yeah. Wait, where's your, where you were going? No, 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 no. I thought oh. we already fixed that. No, I've moved on to section seven. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so taking what we learned from the appeal, I'm wondering if, just like a point of order is not really a motion, but it's in order of when, uh, I mean, technically, a point of order is not a motion. Just like if you're saying an appeal is not technically a motion, so can we throw an appeal, do we need to throw appeal in here somewhere? The appeal would be after a decision is made, so it's not something acceptable during debate, during debate per se, right? And that, right. that 7 1 is the during debate. Um, this says, yep, that says You could under add debate. the following motions are not debatable, and on that list you could say appeal the decision of the chair. Maybe that's, it, it just seems like it should be someplace if we're, if we're going to add it, that it should be in there. Because otherwise it hangs by itself and isn't addressed in these, yeah. in these motions. Um, I don't would think it, it is. Would it, does Roberts consider it debatable? I don't know whether I have my, that list of motions up there back in my bag. Oh, come on. You have it on a thumb drive in your head. Come on. Yeah, we're just wondering if we, since we have that formal idea of an appeal, if we need to toss it into the not debatable <laughs> section. That's all. But the rest of it, I don't no, even have I'm any notes editing on. editing as I go along, so I think so I've so captured I everything. Can, I think, yeah, near the end of 7.1. Um, uh, appeal is actually normally debatable. Oh. Um, it is debatable except if it relates to, it's not debatable when it relates to indecorum or transgression of the rules of speaking or to the priority of business or if made while an undebatable question is immediately impending pending or involved in the appeal. So if you appeal the decision on whether to adjourn, the motion to adjourn is not debatable. You can't debate the appealing the decision to adjourn. Can it's we a weird thing. So do you think we can just throw appeal in here somewhere under adjourn, recess, raise a question of privilege as whatever we called it in the previous section, right? Just to show that it's a kind of thing that gets said at meetings because otherwise it doesn't make sense to me that it's only mentioned in that one section. And I think if we say it's not appealable, then, how, then we trump Robert's rules, right? Uh, right. Right. But right. It, well, it, it, it's debatable if we say it is, is what I'm saying. Robert's rule says it's debatable. We can say it's not because we can have a more strict interpretation oh, but, than Robert's rule but says. The, but the way we just wrote that is they appeal to the full council to override the president, and I assumed we would vote on it. You know, so it wouldn't be one appeal and it stops, so it, it is debatable. Yeah. Um, it's it, by its very nature yeah. debatable. It is, it's by its nature. To, I don't think we need to... I don't think we need to include You think it. just leaving it no. by itself under preservation of order yeah. makes yeah. sense? Yeah. We might want to put it as a new sentence in preservation when so. we're looking at formatting under preservation of order. Maybe put an A, B, and C in somewhere. It's got a couple of different things now. Maybe split out 6, 4 into an A, B, and C. So we're I'm not talking about doing that before we give this to the council, right? So no. if, people, if people are looking at this motion section, right, this very exciting, creative motion section that we've got no. in front of us. No, this um, is not. This is supposed to be a reference for people to be able to figure out, okay, here, I want to do something. How do I pick you got which it. thing to do? So I'm just a little worried that appeals not, and I understand that it doesn't fit. I'm just, mm. I, I just... If I want to do that thing that we just talked about, I don't know where I'm going to find so it. So I think we would add it between two and three. Appeal. The decision of the chair. 
Okay. Because this, this list is not a list of any motions, all motions that are okay, allowed. So it's, I'm, it's, it's not exhausted. Of, right, it's not appeal, exhaustive, but it's appeal, a list. So appeal a motion. Becomes the new three, a, appeal the decision of the presiding officer. So um, is that like a? It would be a new three. Under when the main motion is under debate, the following motions are permitted because if the presiding, oh, I see. it's only the, you know you can't make another main motion while one main motion is under debate. You have to finish that main motion. But appealing the decision of the chair would be allowed during a main motion debate because you can appeal the decision of a point of order or whether. Okay, so I have adjourn, recess, appeal the third. decision of a presiding officer, or a point of order, raise a question. Yeah. So that's so it just fits stuck, under there. I just so stuck it, it in there. So it can fit under there. Yeah. Done. Okay. And it's good. Everything renumbered. It's beautiful. So now we're connected and people can find it. That's awesome. I think one o'clock. It's two o'clock. It's, uh, yep. it's an endless meeting day. <laughs> yep. An endless meeting week. Okay. <laughs> and. Somehow I got myself on the LSSE meeting agenda today without knowing. It, is it. that all for Rule yeah, 7 yeah. completely? I, we, we, I, at least I don't see any other markups on 7. But it, it could be because some people just really didn't want to read that section again. No, that I, would be an okay reason to just let it go, too. So Rule 8. No, and just, just so people know, I mean, I sent me, when I looked across the 20 to 40 council rules of order, this very, the least, <laughs> yeah. the motion. So it, it should be one that we can right. say good, good to Pretty go. Pretty standard, the only, it just has a couple of like charter reference parentheses kind of things that need yeah. to be fixed, which I didn't I mark. So, so we're on eight, and the first thing I really see is eight four. Oh yeah, the MGL reference just has periods in it. Yeah, eight. I forgot how I defined it in the definition, so I was screwing you it up. You took the periods. I, I did the periods, and then, but in the definition, I thought I'd put the definitions with periods, and I didn't. So it which was my I'm own really fault. grateful for. Thank you. It was my own fault because I I was the one being inconsistent. So the first substantive thing, I think, is eight four. Yeah, because you you already fixed the exception thing earlier. Gosh, we don't know. Him. <laughs> I know. So we just talked about this. That's why it, it has a little note. Added based on Town Council 422 informal referral. So just what, tell me again where I'm going to. So the first part under 8.4, the very first paragraph, the very first sentence, it was a restructuring of yes. that. So the restructuring is fine. You had the question about the Rule 8.1 reference and emergency measures, which I actually agree are the same thing. I was concerned that maybe someone thought they might not be, which is why we had them listed twice. Yeah, I I'm was just okay trying to getting rid yeah. of, or you could say resolutions, proclamations, and emergency measures, period, you know, just get rid of the clause about those measures subject to 8.1b. I'd be okay with getting rid of that clause. The emergency measures. <laughs> that's, he just kind of got I, a little. I, when I was doing it, I was like, why do I have that in there? Because that is emergency, but I was afraid to delete it. So if other people also think it's totally redundant, I'm totally fine with deleting it. I think that's what happens when the documents evolve over time. Right. So we're going to get rid of the phrase, those measures subject to 8.1b above. So the, those words don't need to be there. It goes from proclamations to and emergency yes. measures. 8.4? I was out of the whole document, so I oh, got okay. yeah, 8.4. It's page 19. Pick up where online. you left off. Okay. It doesn't always tell you that. Never gonna go with first Except for resolutions, proclamations, and emergency measures. Okay, so just tell me how I'm... I'm accepting all these edits? Accepting all of those and then deleting the phrase, those measures. Well, accepting all the edits in the first sentence, in the first paragraph. Okay. So besides the and deleting the phrase, those measures subject to rule 8.1b above. Does that include exceptions? As an appointment, this whole measure thing is killing me. But um, appointments wouldn't. Uh, 
Yep, you make you know, an excellent point. There's also the issue of referral. We're not going to have that on the agenda two times in a row. Of measures, a bylaw order, resolution, or other vote or proceeding adopted or that the town council might adopt. So it's meant for final things. So appointments from the town manager is a confirmation, so it's not really an adoption. But I don't know. It sounds like that includes yeah. appointments. Yeah, but what about appointments for the council? Either way, it sounds like it includes appointments. So the question is, since the current definition of measure includes appointments, what do we actually want to do about appointments? Do we need to call them out? Because we, we are calling out resolutions and proclamations as not fitting within that definition of measure. And resolutions are technically a measure, but we've taken them out of the measure. Is that correct, Mandy Joe? I mean, normally, if we didn't say anything, a resolution would be a measure. So we're yes. saying our rule is, the charter says this, our rule is that resolutions and proclamations no longer meet that definition. We've pulled them out of that definition. Well, for discussion purposes. Right. This, this is just adding to rules in the charter. So pulling stuff out has will not violate the charter. Right, yeah. right. It's just that we're, we're talking about practical application of the definition of measures. Our rules are giving that practical definition. And so we said resolutions and proclamations would be something you wouldn't need to talk about twice. The point of appointments, though, is that since it's silent, that appears that, appears that it would fall under measures, which means twice. So that's probably not what we actually want to be true. So do we call out appointments and anything else like referrals in addition to resolutions and proclamations? So referrals aren't measures, I don't think, because it's not adoption. No, but motions aren't necessarily measures. <laughs> I hate measures. I just hate measures. Motions by itself are it's not an necessarily an, a measure because our motion to adjourn is not a measure. Well, we'll see, measure is, is got this really the giant That's definition what I just read. in the charter. The, the, That's the, the, the problem. charter definition is the word measure shall mean any bylaw, order, resolution, or other vote or proceeding adopted or that the town council might adopt. A referral's an order. A referral, mm. a referral's an order, an appointment's an order. Yeah. In any other town, those things would count as orders. But adjourning is not an order. Right, yeah. but referrals and referrals and appointments would both be considered orders. Again, a terminology that we haven't really started using yet, but that is yeah. in our charter. So add in appointments and referrals. Do because this that's what we're any, trying to decide and uh, Darcy said what is a measure so we might want to just uh, do measure definition up above too so we don't so people understand what we're talking about you know in, in our opening thing we said when we say measure we mean this but except for tell me I have right now except for resolutions proclamation and emergency measures comma the council okay. shall discuss and now we're at a regular council meeting prior to meeting which the measure will be voted. It sounds like we are potentially adding appointments, appointments and, and referrals, referrals to that list so, of things. So, so except for resolutions, proclamations, appointments and emergency measures? Appointments, referrals, referrals. and emergency measures. Appointments. It we're is accepting. I, I wonder if we go the other way and can say, we go the other way and say bylaws, yes. non-emergency non bylaws, but but yes, is there a way to talk about bylaws? It's, I mean, budget we want discussed at a meeting before we vote. You know, there's a whole bunch of other things that aren't always bylaws that that are policies and all. So I, I think for now we keep the accept until we have a better understanding of what the yeses are. Yeah. Okay, so I have a laundry list that says <laughs> resolutions, proclamations, appointments, referrals, and emergency measures, yes. which does leave you with a lot of other things. So the a lot of other things, the other way of doing this would be say which things require thinking about it. Right, first, that's what Manny Joe was trying to flip it, but then it wasn't clear, like, yeah. is there something, okay. are they really policies? So blah, this, blah, blah. this yeah. actually reads all right. It doesn't look too long. So did we, as a council, at the council, 
decide the resolutions and proclamations? Okay, wait, 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 wait. Oh, no, we sorry. didn't get that far yet. So okay. back on that first thing, now that we have several things, do we want to bullet it or leave it as a no, text paragraph? I definitely do not. Text. Okay. All right, then, moving on. If we are done with that, we are moving to the, to the informal referral. I wrote this based on it being informal referral for us to discuss today for the very oh, first the time. Oh, the three-week one. Okay. I didn't Those two it. sentences. on resolutions and proclamations? Yes, and the one proclamations recognizing is purely based on past experience in this community and I, up I, for discussion. I, I, these new blues. 8.4. These two right here. I, Brand new. Brand I, new. Never saw them before. I personally would lean on the not putting them in because it creates a particular rigidity that we don't have yet. And I'd rather, it seems to address a problem we haven't encountered. So hey, we will. we'll. We'll encounter it. We're already getting close to encountering it. I think it should be better placed on a referral to GOL if we think that we don't have if to we make it think an the council needs some sort of policy on these matters mm -hmm. um, we I don't think as rules have the time at this point to figure that out um, so if you would take if you would lift this as saying this was an initial draft, I would rather it didn't just go into the ether. But if you would lift it as an initial draft to the fu Mandy's future into list. The future list. So we have to because we, Mandy, we Mandy simply didn't have for, enough time to, uh, so, to deal with it. So we have, yeah, we have a lot, well, we have several things. On but there. I felt these were important okay. common That's ways to consider it, but we can consider it in a different body months from now. It doesn't okay. have to be decided Great. now, and we'll just have to do the best we can in the meantime. This was if we could decide in a hurry. And we're not ready to do that, and that's fine. Those can be moved to the not black hole someday list. Okay. And again, to make clear that they were an initial draft, Mandy Joe, not that we all agreed on them. So we're going to delete those two, right? Yeah, so we'll just delete them from here and just move them to the someday list, but not we, say that we, we voted on it. Today to have to use tomorrow morning, and I got to get ready to have that day. So I guess Friday morning. But Lynn, Lynn, what is we've been aiming for Wednesday end of the day? This document to you, we're, Darcy's just asking whether um, we have. Time if we could meet tomorrow morning to keep going it's on this. It's not posted. We can't meet tomorrow morning. We're almost there. We can't meet tomorrow morning. Oh, we could we meet, meet, but we haven't posted morning. a meeting. The earliest, the earliest you can meet now is Thursday yeah. at I, 1 o'clock. Okay. We're almost yeah. there. Okay. We're, we're are, almost we there. We are really close. Plow through. Plow we are close. almost there. Okay. And remembering, this draft is the draft that goes to the council for the first time. And if yes. one of us finds an error in it and says, ah, gee, I wish we would have caught that sooner, whatever, we have time to fix it before the council votes the final time. Nine. I was okay with the 8-6 recommended changes. Oh, gosh, I blew right past that. Because they were small. Yeah. Okay, I'm just going to have take us to nine, I think. Yeah, I'm okay with them also. And one is one I put in a while ago, the accept. Yeah. I just shortened it. So nine two, changing the word pass to vote. Yeah. Sounds good. We don't talk. Oh, we're in rule nine. Yeah, like you said, we're, we're, we're so almost close. there, Kathy. We're almost there. <laughs> I'm and okay with changing pass to vote. Um, we didn't say anything about the waiver of the reading previously, and so I added it in so that we could send people to that rule. Yeah, because I'm, we I'm have okay it with that. I page. would. You had the rule reference prior to the charter reference. 
we I, maybe I, I we just need threw it in move there, the so charter reference to the end of the first sentence and then the rule reference to the end of the second sentence because I the charter trumps the exactly rule. Right. So maybe maybe that's what it is. To, that's maybe, exactly tell right. Me where I'm so on forward. nine two, the second paragraph, yep. um, the charter reference should go after the first yep. sentence and then the rule reference goes after the second sentence. Exactly. So you just move the charter section got over it. and it's good. Got, I got it. Yeah. That's right. It does look really confusing that way. Who would do that? Okay, so um, so charter section 2.10a is after sentence one. It's not after sentence two. Do we keep 2.10a after sentence three? Yes, because that's a term. yes. Yes. Okay. Okay, I'm just taking the blues out. I'm doing a lot of cleaning up as I go along. It's yeah. easier. So then we're at roll call votes. I just rephrased it and added in the CMR. Oh, I, I was okay with that change. If others are. Oh, but then there's something the, the, we can the, argue we, about. We Yay. need to we need to talk about <laughs> this this dispute, Alyssa. Um, that that would be fine. We can talk about it and we can we just have to know if it's if it's something we all agree on or if we have, on if we have a split. You're gonna see abstention, substentions. So the so abstentions. you got the part under roll call votes and that's uh nine point five. So has, nine point four we accepted the change, right? We we did we said we're okay with nine point four. So so the only so nine point five is the explain it part. Yeah, so what Alyssa did was there are three sections at the end of number votes required where I had written abstentions don't count in parentheses in two of them and abstentions count as no votes in parentheses in one of them. Alyssa removed those three, surprisingly did not combine two of the sections because they in theory would be combined if abstentions always don't count. To have it be um, and then moved abstentions don't count to the very top of number of votes required. Um, I do not believe it's consistent with the charter, with the way Alyssa changed the wording. So I don't believe that anywhere in the charter it says that abstentions count as no votes. So the section 2.6C, adoption of measures. Except in the event a higher quantum of vote is required by general laws or this charter, the affirmative vote of a majority of the members present is required to adopt any measure not present and voting, present. And when you read that, because it doesn't exclude the and, it doesn't include the and voting, it means you have to have a majority present, not present and voting. So measures- I'm not making the connection between that and abstentions. It, it means so, they're not counted, you know, for example, even when we, so th that first very long meeting of the council to elect, mm -hmm. we uh, didn't just count the people who voted. <laughs> So, for example, if there is a bylaw measure, or even not a bylaw, say there's a resolution, um, which would be a measure that requires a majority, you know, it, it, that, that resolution could not pass with a, and all 13 of us are there, it could not pass with a 4-3-8 vote, where eight people abstained four voted in favor, three voted against. Because the eight, because it did not receive a majority of those present. It could pass with a seven, well, four, three, eight is the, that's 15 people, that's wrong, four, three, six. It could pass with seven, zero, six. Yeah, so it, it, it I don't it, understand the way you're counting up. I don't know why you're counting abstentions as Because anything. those individuals are present at the they're, meeting. They're present, so the fact that they chose not to register a yes or no, they're still counted as one of 13 as, people. As one that's of not the, the way abstentions No, but that's how the works. charter is and written for the, certain things. But that's the way she just, the sentence she just read would be interpreted that way. That was a terrible mistake. It is. It was done on purpose. It was not a mistake by the Charter Commission. It was done so on purpose. So you're saying that, what? Okay, so you're going to have to find a practical way to explain this because I don't, based on every other form of government service I've done, in terms of abstention, that's not been. So people need to understand that every freaking time we have a vote. 
so because a lot of people like to abstain on a lot of that's things. That's why it's set forth here. As wow. with the abstentions don't count on certain ones where MGL is there, um, majority of present and voting, abstentions don't count. See, I, I had thought appointments would be non-measures. So other people are thinking it's measures, so that one might be inaccurate. And, and we um, took at least one wow. vote where it was six for, six against, and one abstention, and it was declared failed because of the, you know, the abstention. Something like that, yeah. Yeah, it counted as against. So that's, this is that's what this. complicated. Mm -hmm. That's what this does. Yep. And so. It was, it was not a mistake by the Charter Commission. It was done on purpose. To do what? The, because the Charter Commission was extremely wary of seven counselors showing up at a meeting, two voting in favor, one voting against, and something like four abstaining and something passing. And they did not want anything like that to happen. And so they did this on purpose so that you would always be required to have at, at a minimum and, a majority of members you, present it, and that's why we actually used numbers a lot of the time so even if only eight people are present something still needs seven votes even if only eight people are present and i i actually think there are other parts that i would quibble with but i like that decision because if it's important and you say majority if four people are unsure enough to not be able to they are in fact not in favor you know they are I not yet in favor anyway. I just want to clarify a practical thing about taking minutes is that there's no requirement that you record abstentions. The vote of every member. An abstention so is a vote. There are, many, there are many instances where people will say yay, nay, and not yeah, call we, for we, abstentions. We've so been we're saying we're going to call. Maybe the, should we be the clear charter that we're requires for recording the vote of every member, which would include. But vote. if I sit here and don't raise my hand for anything, then you can't make me. So then that needs to be clear. And it gets recorded. We, we, yeah, we've been doing be that. We've, we've, as an we've been recording it. We've, we've been, been doing recording that. abstentions. If I would know, if I just sit here and don't raise my hand, no one has called out and said, so Alyssa abstains, and we added that to the abstention. No, because that hasn't actually happened. Well, that's well, what we, I'm talking we, about. We can into the future because I think we have often, you know, when we came up, we didn't have 13 people. We looked around and said, what happened to the other two? And it became abstained. So. Well, then those. Yeah. So I think we need to go with the existing wording. So I think then the only question um, is under the last bullet point items where I had votes on appointments and other non measures, it should just be votes on non measures. We should get rid of. And where is non measure defined? Well, it's the opposite of measure. If it doesn't fall under the definition of measure. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, Mandy, it's, just tell me if it's, it's at the second very last. The bottom? It's the very second to last bullet point at the very end of oh, this so entire. What do rule. I need to do? Um, get rid of on appointments and other. Just say votes. Oh, votes on non measures instead of right now it reads votes on appointments and other non measures. But shouldn't appointments be in here someplace? So votes on non-bylaw measures, it? if we've determined appointments are a non-bylaw measure, then we could add it to orders, resolutions, or other adopted procedures. That's what I'd like to see. Orders, I'd just like to see it mentioned someplace. So appointments. I don't have to agree with how the voting goes, but just so again, we kind of have a list of, oh, it's an appointment, it fits in this category to actively, because that's an appointment, that's a category we know we have. Right. The catch-all works for most things, but we know I, what appointments are. I really like How about something. proclamations? I love something defined in the negative. Can proclamations <laughs> be alongside resolutions? <laughs> a non uh, yeah, we could put proclamations next Throw to resolutions. Throw because we added those in, into that previous laundry list. So, can I do vote on? Res order, so, so the third from last bullet point, yeah. the one that's where abstentions count as no votes, the votes on non-bylaw measures, and then in parentheses, orders, resolutions, proclamations. appointments or other adopted proceedings. And so abstentions count as no votes for appointments. Yep. That's what I, I, I'm just making sure. That's what I understand. Okay, cool. And then so we're deleting the addition at the very top of abstentions do not count. Yep. We're rejecting that. Right. But you've also corrected the last section so that it no longer says votes on appointments because we moved appointments up yes. and now it just says votes on 
non -measures. measures. It's like our catch-all for everything yes. we didn't call out. If it's not a measure, it doesn't. It needs just a majority of those present and voting. And then there's the MGLs that are present and voting for stabilization and unpaid bills, yeah. which is why that one had it out. So, so up on uh, on nine five, I take the words that were added in. Out. Out. Yes. Okay. Exactly. Interesting. Some of these things weren't track edit, so I had to do double or just strike those. Right. I'll fix it. Because that seems to cover, now our list seems to cover all the basic things we find ourselves doing mm -hmm. on a regular basis. Yeah. I want it to be a useful reference document. We're on to the last rule. <laughs> Look at that. It's like that. Rule 10. Then we have the appendix. We have the appendix to discuss. So we're on the last rule. So you guys can obviously explain again how we came up with those wonderful options that are then are already being carried over by Kathy into the middle of that report that I'd written. And, but I did add two things here that I thought because these were our rules, we might consider putting in our rules. You had, are we on 10-2? Yeah, because I think we already discussed 10-1 at length. I think it's just a matter of I mean, Kathy laid it out beautifully in the report. I think it's quite clear so in there. I personally agreed with the addition of committees should generally have an odd number of members. Um, I, I don't, on the face of it, have a problem with committees of more than one counselor subject to OML. I just thought it was redundant. Yeah, I don't. We had it somewhere else throughout this section that you had deleted it from, or we had it somewhere else. Oh, we had it under powers and duties of standing and ad hoc co council committees 10.6 that you deleted it from. So can we just delete it here? So I would keep it in 10.6 because it's not really a process to establish council committees. It's more of what their rules are. It's Did not they? in 10.6. What it says is comply with open meeting law requirements. I want to make it, I don't care oh, where we, we can re We can rephrase the comply but with open meeting law to our hey, subject to open I just, meeting law. I just have ahead. one I know uh, we decided this way back in the fall that, well, December, committees shall generally have an odd number of members. It clearly says in the charter that multi-member bodies, because they're voting bodies, but I realized that since, for the most part, and that goes back up to our option one and two, um, for the most part, the committees are making recommendations up to the council, so it's okay for them to have a tie vote because they're not the final vote. So. We could, whether we want to or not, have a four-person council meeting. And because we're not gonna be tied by they failed to act because the action comes back up to the full council, which is why I think I see a lot of other town councils with even numbers. They're not worried about, they don't get a majority because they've delegated something and it's coming back to them. Um, and it allows them to preserve councilor time where they might want to have a fifth or sixth committee, but but they can't keep asking five people to be, and three seems to, you know, so it, it's more a question, we didn't have it in the rule here, and I was comfortable with not having it, but allowing us to revisit that decision where it doesn't have to be five, it, just the other. You make a good point. I don't disagree with you. I'm simply reflecting that we're doing that right now. And every time we create a committee, somebody says, well, we should have an odd number of members. Well, well, so I'm because, totally fine with the flexibility. Okay, so, so just take this just take this out. Stay silent on it. So no one's going to say that at the next meeting, right? <laughs> that means that you don't need to say that anymore. That committees are supposed to have And then can we just numbers. reword the, in 10.6, the OML no. thing? The reason I say that is because it's actually specifically here because if you put one counselor, a more than one mm -hmm. counselor on a committee, it belongs here. 10.6 only had the throwaway phrase, will comply with open meeting law requirements. That doesn't make it clear that more than one counselor makes it subject to open meeting no, law. No, I understand that. I'm. But just, if you want to move that sentence down, I'm good with that. Could we combine the one in 10.6 with what you're asking for in 10.2 down into 10.6 somehow? Okay. Because so I, just I, give I it see it me. more properly down there in procedure than in how we establish a committee. The reason I put it up there is because there are work groups that, that there are things that don't include counselors that, okay, whatever. 
fine, you can move it. It's just, we just need to be clear that if it's more than one counselor so on it, it's gonna be subject to open meeting law. There is no such thing as a work group of two counselors that isn't subject to open meeting law. Or any so kind of committee. Just, I'm, I'm only half following what I need to do with what? Down in 10.6? Yep. Um, 10.6 G, well the old G that has some strike throughs, yep. Com Council, com you know, these are council, we're on council committees. I considered that a throwaway line because committees, of course, have to apply with open meeting law compartments. I want, I want to say specifically, because it has more than one council on it, that's why it's required so, to comply with open so meeting law. So you're talking about committees that are not just council committees. You're talking about town committees. I'm talking then. about two councilors being sent off to work on a charge is a committee that needs to be posting. What, what? But, but that's why I put it up at the top because I thought it belonged up there in terms of trying to figure out how to structure the committee. But it that's would be what a com committee of then. two or committee. It would so be a why, committee of it, two. So I don't see why it's any different than a committee of three or four or five. It's a committee of two. I, I, I'm just I'm not quite understanding. You know, we if we're not restricting ourselves on the size, so anything more than one becomes a council committee. If they are assigned to do a job by the just public body, to, to, I mean, it's, to it's do something open meeting law doesn't apply to two random counselors getting together without an assignment from the public body. Right, to but do as something. soon as the public body right. sends them off to yeah. do it, then but they then are it would a be a committee. Then that's more an educational matter, and I still don't want G in there at all. Then I want G removed because, of course, committees have to comply with it. That's like saying don't steal. I mean, committees. Uh, why would we say that so here? So she's just she's. She deleted committees shall imply with open meeting law requirements. Of course they will. I mean, if you're saying, of course it's obvious that anything a counselor's been assigned to do is going to be subject to open meeting law, then of course it's also obvious that any counselor is going to be working under open meeting law. I mean, generally speaking. I, I, I just don't see the purpose of making it seem like there might be some okay. group that doesn't need to comply with open meeting law requirements. So I'm okay then with the deleting G. Just take both of them out. Just take both. Of, I'm okay with taking both of them out then. Both of the one that Alyssa yeah, had added to 10.2. That was C. That, that well, was like, except we took out B. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we're under 10.2. Under 10.2, take out both my additions, right? So it looks like it did before. Yep. I got. I'm just yeah. rejecting the change. So I just okay. And the only other substantial change that was in there. Well, might just, have been under appointments and reappointments. Well, H, I H has, H that has a change. You can't move. What about three? Ten three. Okay, okay. But well, we I say we skipped with, because of that discussion. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll come back to ten six H. Yeah. So ten three, there was a removal, right? The non-voting pointing authority. Oh, I was just changing it to Appendix C, and I also took out the date. Mm -hmm. I didn't see why I'm that was I'm a, oh, The date, no, the beyond, after audit, the four such non-voting oh, members oh, of the down finance there. committee. We were, we were just trying to refer to. We were just doing a cross-reference yeah. to rule 10. Maybe we don't need it. Um, so I'm okay with taking it out. If we don't think we need the cross-reference, I'm good. Okay, and you've put an appendix. It, it is, the cross-reference is there. I moved it up. Look, finance, five counselors, three non-voting members. I oh, just said C oh, rule 10. 10. Okay. okay. So that we could lose a sentence okay. C. I okay. wanted to say so, space. So can you tell me what you think, uh, since I'm looking at Appendix C, we have a values appendix, and what is B? I have, like. B was a, the charter. I have, like, a thousand appendices yeah. here. Okay. So we might just have to highlight that to make sure it's the right reference. So okay. C, is char C is for charge at this moment. Huh. Oh. But we can change that, obviously. Question? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. On the section where you name the committees, yep. Um, going, is the reference to the charter where the a president of a council can um, propose? Uh, we can change these committees. In other words, these may, these may not be the committees three years from now. Absolutely. Right. So it has just just above that Lynn, an F. The council shall review its committee organization each year. So, so we made it that, you know, and actually, you know, we, we were kind of thinking 
at least each year. You know, like, we, you know, we should take a look and see. Yep. Thank you. I, I, we wanted to, we did definitely want to make that clear, that yep. this is right now, but it could be completely different at another time. Okay. I'm going to put that in yellow highlight just so mm -hmm. That's people a good idea. see that. Doesn't work. And that is just as a footnote on that, that's the most frequent ch amendment that I saw in other town councils and rules. They changed how many they had, they changed the jurisdiction, they added one, deleted one. You know, those were the most frequent rules changes. Okay, and I'm just going to put appendix now, so, so see appendix, instead of a letter, since we don't know what the letter is. Yeah, so 10-4. Well, I'd put for now, but. Yeah, well, we, we can add the letter. We, we have email, to add a letter. Just but so we don't lose it. Yeah, 10-4. Um, um, I think Alyssa might have had a comment at some point, but I have a requested deletion in 10-4-B. Okay. And in addition, um, this might be from where comment Alyssa came from. Can we just reword it to the president shall appoint all ad hoc committee members, period? Yes. That sounds really clean. <laughs> nice. I like that. That sounds way better than trying to, why are we calling out other things? Yeah, I like that a lot. Sorry about that. Um, Do you know, do, 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 could I explain C. why I wrote it? Sure. Okay, so 10.4C, a committee gets appointed by the president. The committee shows up in a room that was posted by somebody um, and reserved by somebody and is being run by somebody. So I'm saying the president or whoever the president designates says, okay, here's the first meeting of this ad hoc committee. I want you to go off and post the meeting, talk to staff about getting a room. You can run it or I'll run it until, it, until the meeting gets, elects the first president because otherwise nobody will ever post the meeting. Somebody has to post the meeting and you can't pre-appoint a chair, right? Because we don't do that. Some towns do that. They already have the president appoint the chair. So we didn't do that. So magically, practically speaking, somebody has to take care of setting up the meeting. And it shouldn't necessarily be a burden on the president to do that. Oh, I established the brand new common committee. Oh, I'll have to do the first posting. Oh, I'll have to be the first person. They could, but they could designate somebody else to do it. But they, if we remain silent on it, it it's, we don't know what to do. We literally, why would we be meeting? Who, who should get to be in charge? Just as an example, Darcy, um, at one point there was the idea that depending on the order in which people's names appeared, the first name was always going to be the person to call the meeting and preside. I think when we did audit, um, and I don't think we did it that way, but I'm not sure, because basically I turned to Pat DeAngelis and said, Pat, can you put that together? And I'd like to formalize that to make it clear that that's what you do, and that's totally okay. It's a good thing, but somebody has to do something because otherwise we're all just sitting there having been appointed. We, we have a rule, that's what rules are for, is to show, is to formalize what we're actually doing. Yeah. It shouldn't I, be catch it, as catch can. I prefer to just leave it loose myself because it, it um, the, that gives the president the power to suggest who the chair who they would like the chair to be. That's what she just did when she told Pat to set up the meeting. I, That's I, exactly my point. Right, but the charter doesn't give the president the power to appoint the chairs of the council committee. How about, I, I just realized, C in 10-4 is redundant completely um, because 10-6 has powers and duties of standing and ad hoc council committees. And at the first meeting after appointments are made, committees shall select a chair who will be the committee spokesperson on all matters within the council. So we could, we don't, we're not even consistent on those two wordings. So I added a statement here. Because well, again, hold on, hold we on. Silent. And so I think C104C can be deleted as long as that, I like that language actually better than 106A's language and how you get to a chair. Um, and then instead of president's designee, 
could it be the president shall preside until a chair is elected? So the president has to open every single new, I mean, I don't new care. New committee meeting. But I wanted to give them the flexibility um, to designate it's, somebody. It's, so so I, I'm, I'm curious, Darcy, is that a little bit better? Because then there's no implying on who the chair wants, who the president wants as chair. Does it, that solve that problem? It probably is better. Um, yeah. Well, because we can't remain silent on it because it, 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 it's an actual thing that's happening. But mm -hmm. if you prefer that it be the president and not be allowed to be a designee so that it doesn't give any particular weight to one person or another or first person on the list, that's fine. And that'll just discourage the president from making too many committees because then right. they'll have to go yeah. to them. So that won't be relevant for quite a while, probably now. We don't have our own little committee, not that anecdotes are a good source. We just all came together and looked at each other. We didn't need a chair, and in the ad hoc committee with CRS when we were coming up with a charge, you know, someone posted it, but then we came together as equals. So but someone having the, posted having it. the president sit in the very first one until we get a chair would keep the other group as equals. Absolutely, because you you have yep. to say something, and can, you can't can just I send just people add? Out. I have no problem with the president chairing from my personal position of being president, but it is possible that the president's schedule is just never going to jive with yep. a group. And at what point can they say I write these things the vice for a president? <laughs> so say, could, it, could we just add the president or vice president shall preside until the chair is elected? I think that's fine. So instead of using designee, which I assumed first choice would be vice president, you want to specify that it's vice president. I think that's best. Or do you need to say anything because the vice president can always do things that the president yeah, asks. The president right. So you could you could yeah. arguably not no, need I, to say. I, I think this is Ellie. It's solved, if you like the clarity, the problem. Yep. If and you then like we're the clarity. Taking, can, can we take it out of ten four? And then we'll take all of C out of ten four because it's kind of duplicative. Yep. All of C goes. Yes. And so 10-6, I think instead of shall select a chair, shall elect a chair. Good. Yeah. Who will be the committee spokesperson in matters with the council. So what you said, actually, Manny Joe, is you liked the phrasing from 10.4C. So I you'd really did, kind of replace A with that. I did, but then I read it again. And, <laughs> and then you changed and said, your mind. <laughs> what other officers from among those appointed? Of course it's going to be from among those appointed. So I actually then turned to liking 10.6A's language better, except for elect, they still select, still get okay. You know, but it's changed now. sometimes. <laughs> it's changed. All right. It's done. So it's vice president. This is like the only place we call out the vice president is doing something, but at least it clarifies for our rules. And so 10-5, there was also sort of a similar thing, Alyssa, you added about the appointing authority shall right. preside. Because that's the same for work groups. I mean, So it could be the just chair say, of the appointing authority shall preside, or the preside, uh, we have to use chair. Okay. These are ad hoc council committees, yep. so it is chair. So the chair of the appointing authority shall preside until yep. the yep. chair of the work until the work group chair is elected? Got it. Sure. So you, instead of just saying the appointing authority. Because that's like the whole group. <laughs> well, ex yeah, but. Until it, okay. the work group chair, chair is, is elected. elected. Got it. Did 10-5 come from you or from looking at other examples or what? I just, it's, you, it's, it's fine. I just think it's one of those things you want to highlight yellow. Yeah. Because oh, the work group. Absolutely. This little different. As opposed to ad hoc or standing. No, yeah. This, yeah, work this, groups this are a is, special thing. Yes, this is a highlighter. Thanks, Glenn. So we just added you know, the word I, chair. And so again, it's the this chair was one that, that more than one, but not all towns had, and they, they seem to use them pretty efficiently. So I have a uh, an edit in 10.6, if we're at 10.6. Um, moving, this is just purely moving the site in H. The charter section 2.8 is the council's power. It doesn't uh, give committees all the power. So it was correctly worded the first way. So the committee shall have the same power as the council under six, section 2.8. I just went back and looked at 2.8 doesn't give the committees the power. So the phrasing needs to be as it was, not move to the end. Yeah, I think we did it that way so that we were referencing what the powers in 2.8 are committees have. Right, so it's, it's a yeah. power that council has and we're, 
delegating the same power to a committee. Ah, yeah, right, okay. got it. Because it was such an unusual thing that we were doing by putting it in the middle like that. That's really atypical of the way the rest of this document is written, but it's for a very specific reason. Right, so it, it's similar to saying the vice president shall have the same powers as the president has. Well, that's already in the charter. And, and, but, right, referring, but this one is not. Yeah. So that's why this is special. This is, this is done differently because it actually has a meaning to put it in the middle of the sentence. I think um, you had struck out minutes shall comply with whatever rule it is. I think we need to put it in there yep. because we've added new non-public records law requirements to what our minutes must say. And so if we don't transfer those requirements over to council committees, they're not required of council committees. And I think we want to require them of council committees. Why would you think that council committees weren't required to follow the same rules the rest of the council was? As long as they're because council Because the committees. minutes are only for the council meetings. It's only referred to in council meetings. I don't want any argument. Because so the I think way this we reference, phrased minutes earlier I, makes I think it this seem reference, like it only applies. You know, so for uh, example, it would be that we are keeping a record of our votes. votes. Yeah. Um, well, and well, what I'm saying is I would think that's obvious, and you're saying that based it might on not be. it's not, it might not be obvious because the way our minutes section, our minutes rule reads, it makes it seem like it only applies to regular Correct. meetings yeah. of the council. Correct. I see. Of the council. Okay. So I would keep so it. So it's ahead. emphasis rather than duplication. so that no one what are we doing? guesses otherwise. Uh, what are we doing? Oh, we're on this. What's, what was I, Alyssa? Well, it's now, uh, it's now J, still back to J, I guess, this I, I took out the, what, what's a, <laughs> so explain that? my note on the side says, how does this differ from the previous section about investigation and do we need to split it into two sentences? Because that became this whole like gathered together values statement and, and practical investigation thing all in one. And so I'm just saying, can we, can we split out what we're talking about? On the one hand, we're talking about being creative and respecting everybody's opinions and producing documents. That's separate from how investigation powers work and communicating, if I read this, I'm gonna just call up Guilford whenever I feel like it. That's not what we're suggesting happen in rules. Is it better to just delete the whole thing? That's, that, that, I don't wanna take away people's creativity. Yeah. That, I'm okay with putting a period after documents. Okay. We have to add an and. Yep. <laughs> yes. Darcy, so we'll just if keep you the first remember part who of it. originally, or this is, this, is your, this is your original paragraph from some, oh, right? <laughs> it's been through the sausage grinder a couple no, times. It came from somewhere, but we, we liked it. And we liked the idea that you weren't supposed to always do things the way they'd always been done. Mm -hmm. So this now reads, committee has the right and obligation to be creative, offer opinions, majority or minority, and produce documents. So could, could we rephrase that majority or minority thing? That just strike clangs on my ear. Is it time. offer majority or minority opinions, or offer minority opinions, or like what makes it clearer? Because offer well, opinions. How about just don't. offer opinions? I think that works. So, so do you want to say offer minority opinions? No, offer make opinions, it including minority opinions. Yeah, I don't, I think, I don't under, it, it, uh, so if I, vote if I, if I, if I do, yeah. it yeah. offer, admire, Use. pardon, yeah, no, mm -hmm. so I think you want the, in, in, so I think you want including majority or minority views. Mm -hmm. Ah. Okay. Yeah. Ah, uh, yes. Views, yeah. So Inclusive that, of, including, something along those lines. Including majority or minority views. And produce documents, okay. So the next one, um, we're adding what the report should include. Um, I have one additional thing I'd like to add to that. 
a summary to my laundry list to the laundry list bulleted. before the record of votes. Um, so I think there's got to be an yeah. So after a list of committee members, a summary of the discussion, including pros and cons relating to any proposed action. A summary of give me again of the discussion, comma including pros and cons relating to any proposed action. Well, if in K as rewritten, it says there's an obligation. So if I get creative out but offer opinions, including majority and minority views, so we've, we've said if... I think that's I, an excellent I, solution I, to that I issue. I think it says that if there was a strong minority or any minority view, the report should... So this is... Um, so Mandy's now got a summary of discussion, including pros and cons relating pros... And do you want to add and any minority views? To this is the report section. So G -G I, we could specifically call it out. What because I really that's what I really want to see. I want to really want to see a report that covers everything. I don't want to see separate committee members turning in separate minority reports. The whole report should cover everybody that was at the table and what yeah. they thought, including okay. pros. And okay, cons. So, so I have a just summary, so I've added a summary of discussion, comma, including pros and cons related to any proposed action, comma, minority views, comma, and a record of any votes taken regarding the proposed action. Good, because then that adds that in and doesn't force you to slot it into a pro or con. Yeah. So that works. I would suggest that you also have somewhere that people have to list in these reports the meetings the dates and times of the meetings that have taken place. It since starts, then. that's the beginning. Report shall include the date of the report, list of committee members. But that's the date of the report. Not I want to know the date of the meetings. Okay. Oh. Okay. You are making this so hard. I hear you. I do include it in my reports, but it's hard. Um, okay, so, so I can put dates, dates of dated the Dated summary of the discussion? I don't know, uh, but somewhere, meetings. yeah. List of list of committee members and meetings that have occurred. I, I don't know. I, so if I write a report, so I'm just saying, if I write a report that has that talks about something that happened over the course of three meetings, I'm not going to say on Monday we talked about this, on Tuesday right. we talked about that, yeah. on Wednesday uh, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to say these are the dates we met. Right. These are the dates we voted these. Things. Okay. To leave this, um, try this out on your uh, ears, uh, since you can't see it. So I just added comma, a record of any votes taken regarding the proposed action, comma, and dates of meetings. And leaving it up dates to people, to, I think help. leaving it up yeah. to the committee how to describe This is still that. into the, what the report has to document, you know, like you met on such and such a date to do all of this. I just don't know where to put and dates of meetings. Dates of we meetings want, held? Dates of meetings. Yeah, I would just add the word held in. Yeah. yeah. Rather than, you know, you don't want a report that just says we met three times, right? You want to have a report that shows you met in okay. January, April, and, and we June. And we don't want to say we had scheduled one here and then we canceled it. <laughs> <laughs> or you okay. might put that at the very Okay, end, so we can look, look at this laundry list later, but it's, it's a more comprehensive report. Is this a bulleted list or is this a text list? No, I think it's a text list. list. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> Can, can we have a big can we have a big pink highlight that says Alyssa likes bullets and everyone else <laughs> likes paragraphs? Just saying. <laughs> okay. A balance, so of course. You, a balance. Guess what, Jelani? You've got it throughout this report. We've balanced. <laughs> we balance the desires of text paragraphs and bullets. <laughs> I love it. Okay, ten seven. I broke it out because I found it confusing. I don't care how you label it, but I just thought bullets or letters might be helpful. Breaking out was fine. In moving the one section, um, you dropped the or an alternative process. Yes. And I think last meeting we decided, decided to specifically put it in there because we wanted the ability of the council to change the process without having to change 
the rules. Oh, we're going to have to change the rules if we change if we add another committee. I just I, I am definitely not up with changing an alternative process without changing the rules. I mean, without at least discussing well, it. I, maybe we're talking about different levels of well, applying that, that alternate that, that, process. That wording's so gone all together. Committees to JCP, the appointments to JCPC and budget. How do we get our it, it used to say annually the council by majority vote or an alternative process shall appoint. I just appoint. want the alternative process. Really. Now it says annually by majority of votes. So, so the all or an alternative process is what disappeared. So yes. I, I think we were thinking you could have rank choice, you could have other things. It might just be a not a majority block vote because these are multiple positions. So how do you do that by majority vote per se? then I think we need to figure out what that process is because that's, alternate process We, we weren't sure how out. to do that now, so that's why we put in the wording or alternative process to allow that to happen can we over do it, time. So can if, we do if, it this way and then highlight in the future discussion topics that we, we may want to give ourselves more flexibility? Because I'd like the, this to at the least other, work the for other, now. If we're thinking any process would be some kind of voting, like ranked choice voting, you could reword this to annually the council shall vote to a point. Ooh, and then it doesn't say mm. how. It just says, but it says vote. It's an actual that action. Right. I like that. Right. And this year it's majority vote, and next year it's ranked choice voting, and yeah. This is on um, four people want the two slots for counselors. How do we pick them? How do we pick them? And if there's only uh, one that makes sense. slot that's in contention, you you could rank, you could vote your first, second, third, and fourth, you know, first and second. So I, I just said shall vote because then ma what the, the issue was majority vote if it's more options than one. So the council shall Can vote. I also yeah. say that I really liked the fact that up earlier you acknowledged the polling of people and their interests. Mm -hmm. It cuts down on amount of time you have to spend talking right. at Thing. So if, if you either refer to it as being up there and in each of these cases of committees, even when I'm not appointing. Right. That makes sense because then you would know there's more people than slots or there's not a problem in advance. Shall right? vote after polling. I don't know. Shall vote. Where, where did we do the polling? So annually the council shall vote to appoint. Uh, they, uh, we after taking an initial poll of in, of interest, right? Well, well, what what was the phrasing we used before? Just yeah, to be I consistent. Don't know. I don't so know, I'm thinking like that it was, in, it was in liaisons, right? Or not or in liaisons? Was it in liaisons? Council shall indicate their liaison preferences annually. is what we had said. I don't know how to reword that one. Um, so it, what somebody word, has to I'm, I'm going to do it. Then. Annually, the council shall vote to appoint council members to these committees based on interest ascertained by an initial, um, by initial poll. You know, the first we've got to. Oh, yeah. Right? As but do we need, I mean, I'm not sure we need to say that because I think that so can Lynn's just be point worked just out. is that it's more efficient if we right. first find out, before people come into the meeting, mm -hmm. we find out what the interests yeah. are. After something, yeah. Expressed in some fashion. Um, instead of committees of the town, can we just refer to them as town committees? The charter establishes town committees that include counselors. That, in the first sentence. That, that got changed, didn't that get changed? My um, version has oh, okay. committees as an edit. Then maybe it did. Yeah, it's I, edited, a I, I, I thought it was a my edit, but maybe it was a oh, Melissa so edit. So what it said was the charter establishes committees of the town, and I changed it to town committees, and you're saying, wait, no, what? town committees I'm, I'm good with. I, okay. My version didn't have yeah. it. That I, I could of do the town is gone. Yeah, no, that's good. You had added the president shall appoint one counselor to serve on the participatory budgeting commission, we and we had to, <laughs> we deleted that as as it is not a standing committee that will continue to operate. But, so but it doesn't it need to be in our rules, and it's, it's already been appointed. 
And, and when that person leaves. No, that person's been appointed for the entire But when term. that person says they don't want to do it anymore, that's why I have it in here. Mm -hmm. I totally understand the timing issue. But when that person decides they can't meet that meeting schedule anymore and they'd rather do something else, that's why I'm saying it. Because it's for as long as the Participatory Budgeting Commission exists. Which has an end date of 2020. 20. So it's a whole year from now. A whole lot yeah. can change. Okay, That's so the only reason I left it in there. So it basically was in case the person leaves. doesn't really affect very anything, right? No, not really. Okay. I just prefer it not, but yeah. I won't make any more argument than that. Okay. Only because the person could move to Cancun, as I often say. And I just change it to, are we at 10.8? I'm good with changing it to multiple member bodies. Right. Who'd have thought we'd have to argue over the concept of committee and work group and ad hoc and standing. So I was, well, liaisons had no changes 10, other than. 10 was the next big one, right? So. 10. 10-9, we do need to make sure that the draw straws thing yep. is it's yep. blue. It's yeah. Yellow. But, or is it? Yellow. Yellow. Well, blue is choices, yellow is. Yellow is, cho you have to choose it's two things. Special. Yellow is yes. special. Okay, just making sure we're cool. <laughs> so 10 is the next big one. I think this looked fine. This was. Yeah. I just took a bunch out and then you I wrote took, process and then you wrote it again. yellow. Yeah, I think it's all fine <laughs> when, when it, I wanted to yeah. quote the charter on that. I didn't see that we that we made it any friendlier with no, the way I we said it. Yeah, and then no, I just left fine. the yellow blank, right? No, for yes, whatever we fine. decide. So we don't have the process yet. So process is just highlighted in yellow now in mine. I accepted yeah. all the changes yeah. and, and processes be, in yellow. That'll be filled in before we make the rules final. We just don't know what the answer is yet. So um, are we 10, 10, 10, 11? To 10, 11 on planning board, yes? So. I didn't understand Appendix D. So you can't see the appendices in? No, I, I just don't know why we would have an appendix on the planning board and the We're, zoning board. We don't. We have an appendix on the OCA appointment and appointment confirmation appendix process. Appendix D right now is the proposed OCA appointing process. That's, that, I mean, that's what my draft says it is. I'm not that, saying you knew that before you wrote right. my draft. I'm saying my draft has many pages of appendices, and that's one of them. So if you're scrolling down. So <laughs> if we're going to attach the OCA process instead of, you know, sh you had gotten rid of the language that says these appointments shall comply with the process set forth by the OCA committee. I and instead you just referenced Appendix yes. D. Because um, that way when it changes, it doesn't have no, to be, until we decide that it has to be voted. No, uh, it currently see, I think the voted. original language leaves it, if it changes, it just changes. If we codify it in Appendix D, we have to go and change in Appendix D. So I would rather not add it as an appendix. Where would we keep what, the process so, if we didn't keep it in an appendix? What I would say is we get rid of the Appendix D reference after the first sentence because Appendix D does not relate at all to appointing. The OCA process doesn't really relate to the authority the council has to appoint those members. Um, and then you... Yes. Wait, 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 wait. Um, and then the sentence that these appointments shall comply with the practice set forth by the OCA committee, then you say Appendix D. Then you do Appendix D. Then you do Appendix D. And Appendix D sets forth the process. I made it shorter. You're, I understand what you're saying, and I don't like the shall comply with, but okay, if you think it makes it clear. I was, well, I was trying you, to get to that point without using all those words. But you can say shall follow the practice. Or shall follow the practice set forth by the... And, that's when, and then you're the putting the committee. Appendix D And then you put after. the reference after that sentence that says I see Appendix that. D. Yeah. Okay. It's a little longer again, but it makes it's much clearer who has authority oh, over shoot. what. Yes. With the OCA committee practice? OCA committee policy? It's a practice. Practice? Okay. That's what Lauren told us it is. It's a practice. So it has to get into the two adopted. Okay. And then I'm I... Although I called it a process, too, because it is a whole process. Appendix. 
So maybe, do you want to say process, practice, whatever we practice say we should design. carry forward? We should get rid of town council instead of it should be council. Yes. Shall appoint at the very beginning of that. Yeah, that's yes, that was me forgetting that. Okay, so list? this currently reads, after I did those edits, the council shall appoint all members of the Planning Board and Zoning Board of Appeals for staggered three-year terms. These appointments shall follow the OCA committee practice. Appendix D. Um, after the first sentence, it should say Charter Section 2.9. Yes, state. exactly. I shouldn't have removed that. Charter. That should have been, that should have Sex. stayed there. Say again. Charter Me? Section 2.9C. 2.9. Are we listing the, the two list outs then? Um, do we need to? I wouldn't. That's entirely, I, I threw that as an option if you wanted to see it just be, it's, but it, it's, it, it's not like anything else. I would delete I mean, we it. did it. We did it with our council committees. Right. I would delete so I was kind of like, it's like our council committees, but it's not like our council committees. So I'm fine with leaving it in there. I just want to see what it looked like. It looks a little bit It funky. looks weird, I think. Okay. It looks a little funky. So delete yeah. it. Exactly. But it is our only appointments, right? So I was like trying, I was trying to give us credit for planning board and zoning board of appeals. It was so short. <laughs> okay. I just deleted the, it. Delete the listing of planning board seven members, zoning board of appeals five members. Did you like having members. it in there? The other, I'll like tell it? you the other reason I wrote it there. I didn't know why we had this whole section. I'll tell you exactly why we have this. Well, I don't know why we have the section planning board and zoning board of appeals to yep. begin with. But aside from, I just edited what was there. But the other point is the reason <laughs> I, I listed these two things specifically is because we it says three-year terms, and associates are not three. Three associates are not members, and so I was just Can like, we does go back people to, We just that? had three committee members say, "I don't know why we have section 1011." Right. Yeah. Does that just mean we should delete it? I'm okay with deleting it, yep. Melanie. Yep. Yep. So let's just delete the whole thing. The <laughs> only reason here's the only reason to keep it. So, so the only reason to keep it. And I already can see I have a fight on my hands associated with the appendices. Yeah. But the only reason to keep it is if we're keeping the OCA practice slash process slash policy someplace because there is no repository of that information otherwise. So if we're keeping it, then you would want to talk about planning board, zoning board appeals. But you don't need to talk about planning boards because it's in the charter, right? I think we can get rid of planning board and zoning appeals and still attach the OCA practice practice if we want to, to the appendix, even if we don't then, refer to it in the And rules. then we just have to look backwards to where the word appointment, it, it, we, we can anchor it. To, we have to reference it somewhere for people to understand what it is. But we, we just figure out there's going to be some place we can stick it in. Yeah, it doesn't make sense. So let's, let, let's just. Because we're not really developing anything should, new. Should, should, should I just delete 10. this 11? I think you delete 1011. Yeah. Because we don't, it, Go on. we're not supposed to repeat all of what the charter said. Good. It's gone. Good. Okay, so Appendix A, Shalini, this happened while you left the room. <laughs> and now it's happening again at 10 after 1. It's yeah. happening again. So here was, our, here was our thinking on this shortened version. We tried to capture the words that were in the sub-bullets, and we thought um, the, the longer document, which... Uh, characterize what do we mean by each of these with a series we can be posting it somewhere but that this would be uh, yeah okay so we shortened it to the main and then we also turned it into a we value we value you know almost like a declaration all the way through I, I was and I, I forgot I was I forgot that uh, Kathy's supposed to out, out. That, that was a discussion, and we, we looked at the first names to figure out what would be first. Because prioritizing might be too far. Yeah. And so with the alphabetizer, it's actually the alphabetizer that makes sense. Yeah. 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 And, and we remember when we looked at the first letters, we said, good, the first one's community participation. The second is creativity. So we liked. Okay, we had a so long conversation about this, actually. We did. Actually. So, okay, I'll remember. Yeah. But it made a lot of sense when we got to okay, that Okay, I'll do it.
some of them need to be married, so it's to work with the value of like working with that. But you know, and so it just so so, and so, so I just add in like and give five and not to like to work. So that, that to me is the sure. whole um, feeling and that's fine. I'm just gonna add it and uh, and take so pride in our collective work. So now it says we value Okay, so we value our colleagues working in collaboration and take pride in our collective works. So I just edit changed yeah. it. And on healthy balance you, you saw we tried to get balance health No, I, I like that a lot. That I'm fine. No, I think it's fine to to including our intentions which said got it Okay, so, so, yeah. So it would become a three sentence sort of grouping. So diversity of our residents, comma, the inclusion of voices all the way to rich personality, comma, and the feeling of safety in participation. And, or feeling safe. Or, or, and, and feeling safe in participation. So it, it, Great. So I think we, 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 yeah, Kathy can read the whole we thing. We value the diversity of our residents, comma, the inclusion of voices, ideas, and cultures that reflect Amherst's rich personality, comma, yeah. and and the feel and feeling safe in participation. Oh, and creating safe spaces and to creating, participate. Okay. Yeah. Creating that's nice. Safe spaces to, to participate. participate. That's nice. So it's community participation. What you're getting is uh, town responsiveness or, or something like that, that that doesn't quite, if anyone figures out where to put it, um, the not that anyone should care, but we currently have 10, which is always a nice yeah. number. It's a nice yeah. number, so if you can figure out, um, no, it's all right, but community, Because it could be, you could do community participation, responsiveness to community needs. If the word is, if responsiveness is, you know, so what's the key quality that we're looking for? Or you could put it under respect. Respect may be different in 
Yeah, but respect is different. Okay, just think about it. And so if by tomorrow morning someone comes with a way to put it into one of the 10, and if we have a, an 11th, it's an 11th. It fits on one page. So can I just speak about appendices for a minute? So we're way over time. It's 1.20. We don't have a lot of time left. Kathy's done an amazing job of pulling things together as we're typing. So we're going to be looking, we're going to need to, we meaning those of us who get assigned to, are going to be finishing the report and also updating this document. And of course, we all know what our deadlines are for getting in the packet, but you know, the long, sometimes things will not actually get done on time. Certainly the report will be ready for the packet, but the document itself, if it's still getting some tweaks, I think that we, we have a little bit of, we just have people upload it when it's ready to be uploaded. In terms of other things to do, we haven't talked about the town council section because that the the council. <laughs> oh, sorry, we haven't talked about the clerk of the okay, council section I, I, because I that's new. I, but I do want to do a quick thing on appendix. I'm I'm going, coming back to that. I'm, I'm going over the things that we're already over time and that we haven't done. So we have that. We have brand new information from the clerk that we definitely haven't looked at, and so we'll have to think about what do we want to try and do with that for this particular version that we send to, so we can see if we can look at it quickly. You can all, if you want, try and bring it up. It's in today's meeting packet, but I know that always takes forever for people to bring up a document. But in terms of the appendices, so my point to the appendices is that in addition to the values, based on my experience in this community, there is no place where things are kept in any organized fashion, even now that we have things done electronically. So if you want to see where all the committee charges are, there is not one place for that. If you want to see where all the policies are, there's not one place for that. So this seemed like a natural outgrowth of a place that the town council could start keeping track of the things that are actually related to us. So we, we had always intended to put the charges here. So an appendix B with the charges makes sense because we shorten them to one name. Right? We don't, almost all towns do a paragraph to say what the thing is um, and we don't, so, my so are you looking at my append current appendix C? Right, so that had always, we referenced that in the internal documents. So I think the values thing and charges, absolutely. And now I'm hearing people want the OCA process. That would be okay, you know, to put it. But what I think we should be doing to address your concern is have a page, a document page that says, you know, here are the operating whatevers of the town, which says, here's the charter, here's our rules of procedure, here's our other things, because it is hard. You have to go to something called charter um, to find the charter, but, but we could do council-related things, and we could keep posting them as we come up with, rather than creating one document that is really long and you have to do it, because I like the cleanness of other towns rules of procedure, they always tell you where to find their charter, you know, so instead of putting it in it, but I like the idea that on one thing that you say, you know, the homeroom charter plus rules governing the way the council operates can all be found here. Here's our rules of, because in some towns you can't find the rules of procedure. It's yeah. embedded in their bylaws, you know, it's really you had to search for them. But you could find our bylaws, you know, so you would just go to click, 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 click. What I'm saying is that does not currently happen with the staff that we have in place now. The documents that I've listed at the end are in, not in one place anywhere on the website and never will be unless we come up with a construction. And so this seemed like one way of coming up with that construction. The other thing under committee charges I wanted to put in is that GOL has adopted a charge convention and it seems appropriate, just like with OCA's process, to have that in an appendix, not something that you revote as a rule, but as a 
here's a thing. If we just called it a binder, you know, the mm. electronic version of a binder, I don't have a problem with that, but somebody needs to be responsible for keeping that stuff together so that when we develop a new charge, I need to know without having to go to GOL what their conventions are, and I don't need to dig through 50 old town council packets to find that out. So GOL has put that on GOL's webpage now, um, but that's in some sense besides the point. I think Alyssa's attempt here is an attempt to do too much for a document that's not supposed to be that. This is supposed to be a council rules of procedure. It's not supposed to bring forward executive policies and many of the appendix E or whatever appendix it is where there's listed, many of them are policies for the executive, not even policies That's for the town council. That's not true. These are all um, related to the council. No, but not really. Um, when I look at some of the policies that are here, um, and I have so many things up, you know, the charter can be listed separately. I don't think we can attach it here. We're going to have too long of a document. You're not going to be paging back and forth between the rules and the charter in the same rules document. You're going to want two That's different fine. tabs. That's fine. Um, but when you look at the committee charges, the charge template, that changes, and then you have to update it. I'm not as much, but the OCA appointments, whatever. But then the guidelines for review. I, again, that's adopted by the council or a council committee, so in some sense I don't have as much problem, but then you look at policies and regulations currently in effect. You've got reappointment policies. The council has not adopted that. That's but they, a, they, look, exist. but parking regulations, permit parking regulations, it's lunch no, cart rules, you know, doesn't. taxi rules, none of it really is complete streets policy. We, we as a council, the public shade tree, you know, I just look at some of these and I go, these are not, these are more you're arguing that they're not executive, but I don't see them as rules for operating on the council. I understand that. <laughs> what I'm saying is these 13 people do not know this list of things exist that are currently affecting the way things work and that are things that are then, now then our responsibility. I, but that's a different document. That's and a different I, document. So I have no, no problem one has saying that we all need to know this. But that is a different document. It's not this. You're document. saying that you wouldn't. So when the council develops a policy on something, you're saying you wouldn't add that as an not, appendix not to the rules. Not into something that's called rules of procedure. No. You would have a separate policy. Would you do anything? I guess that's what I'm asking you. Is then what would you do if you went? I understand not putting it in the body of the rules. I understand that you're uneasy with putting it into an appendix. So where will you keep you, a new town you council have policy? A, if the town council adopts it, you have a page on the council webpage that says adopted policies. That's a good, that's a good imaginary <laughs> construct, but these don't exist anywhere on a web page right now. Okay, but, so. but, but we're talking about there's no way right now for correspondence to be posted. We, we do right. not have to accept the existing web page. I, I agree you can't easily find these things. We should make them easy to find. And, and so we're saying we want to focus on the electronic depository that way, so rather than trying to at attach everything to a Absolutely. A so, so, so I speak, think this notebook. is a terrific list, and I think we should be, um, once we can get through this document, but we should be meeting with IT saying how hard it is. You can't find the parking map. You can't find parking. You know, so people in parking are talking. One of the recommendations. Yes. This is a, is a way to keep track of everything that, without cluttering up our rules, right. without adding too many un extraneous appendices, there has to be a structure Absol for other absolutely. things. And uh, specifically mentioning correspondence, I think that would be good, Mandy Joe, yeah. if you would make sure that's on your list. And okay. then also where to keep policies and regulations that are currently in effect. Okay, that I, would be I, no, great. I think, think it'd be great. So if we to carry it all over into that document, that would solve all of those problems. Okay. We wouldn't lose sight so of it. So for the time being, this document that is almost finished now, other than me doing the alphabetizing, the, the yellow and the blue, <laughs> and, the, and we and added the one more blue, section. and putting in the clerk wording, um, it D will just say at the back of it, it will say Appendix B will be the charges. We're just not going to put them in yet. You know, so people will know to come, and Appendix C will be the OCA, OCA process. Yep. I'll just leave them as, as headers. You just know, like the table of contents. Have them look just like that. Yeah, yeah, that'll make sense. So I had put in a section on the council, because we talked about it last, or the clerk of the council, and I'd put in a section, but I've since gotten additional information, and that's in an email. And so I don't know what to do in terms of, given our timing here, 
So if we could page way back, it right. would be 2.3 eventually. But so, so Alyssa, is, what do you think do is the way the, to handle this? Do we have all have the email right now, or can it's we? In, it's in the meeting packet. Meeting. For, oh God, is it? It should be in the meeting. It's in there. The question is, which folder is it in? Ad hoc. Folder. It is in the folder meeting 2019-0430 rules, and it has a little ask little burst next to it that says clerk in rules Nardowis email 429. Because she added things to it, which are really good for us to know. So, clerk rules from Norwich. Yep. Four twenty nine. Yep. Can everybody see that? Can you see it, yeah. Darcy? I just need to make it bigger because right now it's here. Can go it into meeting. Go back all the way to the top level of our documents, and there's something called meetings with today's date. Ooh, I, I was going to add an after council meetings in the general duty section too. <laughs> well, you guys, what's the difference between thinking alike? Thank you so much, Shalini. At least we got to talk about values with you here yes. this time. Yay! <laughs> I think all of these are fine. red is what she's adding. I mean, I pr my temptation at this point is to include everything and, yeah. and say, hey, we didn't, you know, this isn't one we talked about a lot, but this is a brand new position and it seems really worth having it in here. We could make it yellow. <laughs> so I, I, I would go with everything she had in her email, throw it in for now. Yes. yes. Um, That's what I think. So it's honoring. She took the time to. Yeah, to, to exactly. And then I had a couple that aren't, I don't think quite included. In that, let me find my. See if I so can the, copy. In the, in this um, version, my my words are black. So hers, and hers are just are hers red. are just red, right? So yeah. if I yes. copy this, so okay. so, so the black should already be in. Yeah. The document um, should already be. In I our had three. Version. I think she covered two of them. The two that I think she covered are the receive group petitions under Charter Section 8.2 and receive initiated them in accordance with Charter Section 8.3. I think she may have. Did covered them maybe other duties oh, no I don't really that much. I can't, but yeah theoretically her email the the black part is already now highlighted blue kathy in 2.4 no. and then her stuff is off yeah so, I'll, I'll so, so my my three, three would mine. need added in because she didn't cover those two so my three under general duties are coordinate the work of the individual or form selected to complete the annual audit yeah, yeah, yeah. i will send you an email Okay. Um, but to, to say what those three are is the coordinating the work of the individual or form firm selected to complete the annual audit. That has a charter reference. If we want to okay. reference the charter, we can. Oh, right. um, the language I took directly from the charter. Um, receive group petitions under charter section 8.2 and receive initiative measures that's, that's and that wording I sent you. forward them in accordance with charter section 8.2. So I had already included all the references to the charter section under clerk of the council she in the version that just didn't call them out. I didn't call them out. They were all off included. I just didn't add all the words. So from I copied them. and copied. Oh, that was a section I wanted to delete that sentence. I wanted to delete. You wanted to delete four. this. So sentence clerk of the council section. shall perform duties as may be assigned by this charter or by other vote of the town and then council. I listed a million charter yeah, references. I, we're, we're assigning the duties. So the reason under the so, rules. So calling it out to me is that circular reference again. So the reason I did that is because I then broke it into prior to council meetings during town council meetings right. and doing things like the audit has nothing to do with prior to town no, council yeah, meetings. No, yeah, that's a general duty. Meeting. It's and a so, general duty. So I see that, that you've broken out what were, what were my original just references to things that I wasn't talking about during meetings. You're now saying break that out for as, general duties. As, as Margaret did. Margaret did with yeah. after the council meeting yeah. and then general duties. Because my initial yeah. goal was to say what we expect from her is we're all sitting here as opposed right. to every um, charter no. reference about her. Um, because we're not repeating the charter and everything else. Yeah. But I appreciate the general duty section then works for that. So I'll email you, Kathy, those okay. three. And then I'll take what Mandy's sending me. I'm going to take this because SharePoint and its wisdom won't allow me to copy and paste from one document. So I have to download this document, then copy and paste. And I'm out of steam for doing that. So, right Mandy now. Jo, maybe you could just take the whole thing out of the email 
I can even forward it to you as Wait. an can email. Can you forward it to me as an email to make sure email? it copies and pastes accurately? And then she, you can redo the whole thing and give it to Kathy. And it can, she can just drop it in to this section. Yeah, no, I can because download this. All I'm just saying is I'm normally, the way I edit stuff, I can copy from one document and paste it. Why don't another. you email her the Margaret one? I I'll email the, download. you got it? I downloaded okay. it. Yeah. Can you copy and paste from the PDF, can though? Is it giving you yeah, fits? versus just Sometimes they're weird that way. Is it a PDF? Way. Yeah. I yeah, can, it was I, a PDF. I, I can always copy and paste from a PDF. Okay. I've mastered that. Just there's making a sure trick. it's not doing anything crazy for you. So that no, there's I, a trick. Six in the morning when I'm not answering your email, you're asking me that question. So no, I wouldn't do that. But sometimes PDFs are badly behaved. No, if you double click and if it doesn't respond, then you can uh, go up to the edit thing and you can copy it. <laughs> but, uh, but I'll get so it. So that'll get dropped in and that'll be great. So my, my to-do list is I'm going to, um, the thing we just, the one sentence that we voted on to conclude or not, I'm turning that into an option. And this report that we're writing, um, we'll flag that as one other place to take a look at with an argument for yes. and against the, the inclusion of that sentence. So then and that's the only substantive change to the report, as I recall. Let's see, Mandy had a, a text block that she was going to add in on uh, going to GOF. It was it the GOF? That's a separate report. That's not going out to the right. council tomorrow, no. right? No, right. Yeah. That's, that's our, and s soon you'll see a report, but we won't do it yet because we might, we might get feedback from the council about more things we want to put in that report. So I think yours is just a, there will be a, a future report, a future report will discuss items I'll to say be that referred in our report. to other yes. committees. I'll say something. that in our report. Okay. Yes, exactly. So I've got a, um, then, oh, so I was editing on that report, so I will Oh, so save, send me that again. I will save this as a draft two and upload it, okay? Right. Because I took what, people made other comments on what I had drafted. Yeah, because I have a during meeting version, but I don't, yeah, I don't want to mess up what you wrote down. So do you feel comfortable, Kathy, given the, the largeness of your assignment? Do you feel like you want any of the other members who don't have any assignments um, to do things like go through one more time for formatting or anything like that, or would you just feel um, more comfortable owning that well, yourself? What I would feel really comfortable, I was going to go through and do the formatting, and my my change was going to be instead of A with paren paren next to it, it was going to be A period, because more of them appear, and Mandy didn't mind that. And then instead oh, in of terms of like it's the, the numbering outline. system, the outline yeah. system. So the uh, anything without Romans is good. And then I was going <laughs> to convert all the Romans to one, two, three, fours. Awesome. Okay, so and just if we have to go beyond the where the Romans appeared in the charter, that third level, can the fourth level be back to letters? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. And so it's always number, letter, number, letter. Yes, and <laughs> and I think there's only one part of our draft that even gets down to the little number. Thing, you know, so for the most part, right. we're not going five levels down or whatever the level is. So I'll just go ahead and do that because it's kind of easy since 60% are one way anyway. Or And then what would be helpful is um, I will get this done before I go to bed tonight. And so I'll just attach copy. I'll, I'll upload it to share, but it would be good to have the proofreads, you know, what did I miss? So we get a, a group read of it, um, anyone who has the... Because you've had to deal with so many individual changes that, like, just looking, oh, wait, is this, yeah, okay. Yeah, and so and overall, so, so that could be, so if we're aiming by um, end of the day tomorrow to be what we think is final, and then I think we should share this revised report just to get a sign-off from everyone that we got everything in it. Or, or just at least give a copy of the report. I think we're only adding the one more, a couple more things, so maybe we're signed off on that too. But it looks like Thursday is definitely doable, if not. So, I mean, I'm gonna finish the report without putting it back out to the committee. That's just okay. not something I do, okay. but 
but the style, but I appreciate that if you if you feel like you have the time that you're willing to put it back up for style edits so people can't, it's like speak now or forever hold your peace. Like don't be pointing out the parentheses later and that sort of thing. Yeah, no, I'll just it. do it. It makes great. it easier because sometimes we've indented the little a and sometimes yeah. we didn't indent the little a and it just makes it look nice if it's more or less the same. And yeah. anything I miss can be done later, right? Yeah, because this isn't the final so we can pull those forward. They don't have to, I, I'm, I would be comfortable with you doing what you need to do, not putting it back out to us, okay. and so that it can get out to the whole council, and then at one of our next meetings, because if we all just grant Kathy the ability to do the Scrivener style changes, if we vote for that today, that she has that authority, we don't all have to run through it for that okay. between now so and tomorrow. What, what I'm saying is I, I'd like to see more people participating in the final version of this. And so if Darcy and Shalini could take the time to make sure there weren't any it, edits like that, because I don't want it, it to become, go out to the whole council it becomes no. optional. errors. It becomes optional. So okay. I, I will commit to getting it back to people by my end of the day. Okay. And to the extent people have the stomach to read it one more time, they can. Right, and you can tell, you can say, it would be good to, because this is the last chance before the whole council sees it, please let me know by whatever time okay. that you've done that. So give people a deadline. The other thing that Lynn requested, she's on the phone right now, is that we go ahead and think in advance and even, and even draft them what the three or four projection things would be um, so we're not scrambling to do that on Monday morning. Um, so, um, Well, I won't be because I'll be in a different meeting at that time, as will yeah, Darcy, but, but, so but we won't I'm, be scrambling I'm to make slides. I'm actually pretty facile with PowerPoint, so I could go ahead and do a first stab at that and I also prefer the largest font possible so one can read it. <laughs> so the goal would, you know, I, you know, without. I'm fine with you doing that personally. So I, I won't be able to get to it till today is Tuesday, so I could get to it on Thursday. Um, yeah, I'm not, okay. I'm out of town. So um, yes, you could work, Lynn, Kathy's gonna work with you on the slides. Yeah, so let me just, you know, I'll do a, a rough draft and I'll do them in PowerPoint and then you can, when you get this, we will have yellow highlighted the things we think are of particular note and uh, you can figure out whether we missed some of them. <laughs> you say, wait a minute, you, <laughs> that's major, not minor. Okay, I didn't think this was possible to finish before the finance committee started. <laughs> What do we think? Are we done? Yeah. Do you want to make a motion, Darcy? I move we adjourn. I'll second. I already wrote those were the two names. So. Okay. <laughs> All those in favor, please yes. say aye. Yes. All right. We are adjourned at 1.43 p.m.